Fans Rivalry Week, presented by Remington. For Kansas State and their outstanding wide receiver, Jordy Nelson, today's game comes down to this. Win and become bowl eligible, lose, and a season that began with so much promise will come to a bitter end. At Fresno State, Pat Hill and his Bulldogs have already achieved bowl eligibility. It's respect and recognition that they desire, and another win against a BCS opponent would be a major step in that direction. Kansas State and Fresno State is next. Today in Fresno, California, Wildcats and Bulldogs will be fighting like, well, cats and dogs. Kansas State and Fresno State meeting on the football field for just the second time. This afternoon, bowl possibilities are still very much up in the air. Hello, everyone. So glad you could join us. Alongside James Hasty, my name is Eric Collins. And folks, this is what is at stake. Fresno State, they're already bowl eligible with six wins. They need today's win for a real signature win against a BCS conference opponent. For Kansas State, they have just five wins. They need to win today to become bowl eligible, then cross their fingers and hope if they're going to win, they're going to have to rely on that big-time offense they have. And that big-time offense starts with quarterbacks and true sophomore Josh Freeman. Josh Freeman, his first five starts last year, eight interceptions. He struggled early, but this year he's off to a great start. He's got 3,000 yards so far, and 1,400 of those yards have gone to Jordy Nelson, the people's champ, as the Kansas State fans like to call him. If they're going to have any success today, that's the Kansas State Bull, Kansas State Wildcats, should I say, they need to get Jordy Nelson the ball. Jordy Nelson, a senior, doing fantastic things in his final goal round. Already this season, five 10 reception games and seven. 100-yard receiving games, both of them school records. Well, it is senior day here at Fresno, but all eyes are on the freshman. With more on that, let's go down to Vince Welch. And that freshman is freshman running back Ryan Matthews of Fresno State. Averages almost six and a half yards per carry. He scored 12 touchdowns. Those are the top freshman numbers in the country for the running back position. But he's been down with an ankle injury. Did not play in the most recent game for Fresno State. I watched him during warm-ups. He looked to be going through the warm-ups without a hitch. Had a chance to speak with him just a moment ago. He said he feels great. No ill effects of the ankle. He's ready to go. Says he's 100%. Eric? Thank you, Vince. It is the final home game of the season for the Fresno State Bulldogs, and here they come. The Fresno State Bulldogs and their fans obviously with fantastic muscle memory against Kansas State. The last time these two teams met in 2003, the Bulldogs with one of their biggest wins in program history. Will history repeat itself? Answers are coming up in just a couple of moments. Don't go anywhere. The kickoff is coming your way. Fresno State and Kansas State. Today's telecast is available on ESPN2, presented by Pioneer Kuro HDTV. It is Kansas State and Fresno State meeting for just the second time ever. Back in 2004, Fresno State with a huge win against Kansas State. Well, Vince Welch is standing by with the head coach for Fresno State, Pat Hill. Coach, you're already bowl eligible. What's the opportunity presented for your team here today against this Big 12 team? Well, every time we play, it's an opportunity. This year, we've played a great schedule, you know, with the two teams in the WAC and Texas A&M and Oregon and now Kansas State. We have a different approach. We play as tough a non-league schedule as we can. Gives us a chance to get our seventh win with a team that's very resilient. We're playing a very young football team right now, and we just need to keep improving and give ourselves a chance to compete here today. And uh, I, I like 
I like the way our team has performed this year. What do you have to do today to win? Well, we're, we're going to have to play for four quarters. We, we, didn't, we haven't done that all year. And if we can put four good quarters together, I feel the scoreboard will take care of itself. Thanks, Coach. Eric? Vince, thank you so much. Well, there is a lot at stake for both Pat Hill and his counterpart on the other sideline, Ron Prince in Kansas State. Kansas State, they need to win to pick up their sixth win and become bowl eligible. Fresno State, they've already got those six wins to become bowl eligible, but they want to really solidify themselves with a big win at home against the BCS Conference team. We have a lot on our plate over the next couple of hours. This is what is on our menu. We will introduce you to Mr. Perfect, Jordy Nelson. <laughs> He's done just about everything right in his four years in Manhattan, Kansas. We'll talk about the philosophy right. of Pat Hill, anyone, anytime, any place. And, of course, we will talk to the, the very happy head coach of the Hawaii congratulations. Warriors from yeah. last night. June Jones will join us in yeah. a little bit. Much deserved congratulations to the Rainbows for a fantastic, for, to the Warriors for a fantastic victory last night. That was a just a, a massive game in the WAC yesterday. It was, and, and what a turnout as well. The fans really turned out for that game, and uh, really nice to see June Jones in that program finally get some recognition. Yeah, Hawaii doing what Boise State did last year. Just played fantastic from start to finish and run yep. the table in the regular yep. season. Clint Stitzer, he of the 4-0 GPA, kicks it off. It is a low bouncing kick into the end zone, and it will be a touchback. Kansas State will start at the 20-yard line. Here's the quarterback. Now his second season as a starter, sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri, Josh Freeman. Important for Josh to get off to a good start on this first drive. When you go back and start looking at statistics of the last few games they've played, when Josh has struggled early on in that very first drive, they've not been able to produce points in the first half, and they want to go into the half ahead, and this is a key down, a key, key drive right now. Josh Freeman definitely looks the part. 6'6", 250 pounds, already a school record with over 3,000 passing yards on the season. Last week, they ran the ball very effectively in the first half against Missouri with James Johnson, then kind of abandoned it in the second half. They give to Johnson to start the game, and he powers forward for a pickup of six. Well, with the Kansas State offensive starters, here's wide receiver Deion Murphy. Deion Murphy, Houston, Texas, wide receiver for the K-State Wildcats. We got today at right tackle, we got Ben Lou, the California hero. We got in the backfield, number eight, James Johnson from Port Arthur, Texas. Then we got a wide receiver next to me. We got Riley's County, All-American, Jordan Nelson. Then we got the 6'6", 12-year-old Josh Freeman. Well, that run not nearly as impressive for James Johnson. He is brought down in the backfield, Trevor Shambley. Drops him for a loss of four. Well, and he lost his footing there. It's going to be important, again, to establish the run game. The young man has had 1,000 yards so far this year. He's shown that he's a very capable, more than capable running back. Raymond wants to throw for the first time today. And he has his man. We're going to see a lot of that. Jordy Nelson, his first grab, a pickup of nine, and a first down for the Wildcats. Well, and if you're going to have success against Jordy Nelson, you're going to have to get your hands on him. And in this particular scenario, at the, at the corner spot, you, their guys are letting them guys get clean releases. And if Jordy Nelson gets a clean release, he's going to convert the, the sticks and move the sticks all day long. So it's important for the Fresno State secondary to get their hands on Jordy Nelson at all times. Nelson, 6'3", 217 pounds. He has had an absolutely awe-inspiring senior year. Back to the ground they go with Johnson. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Good defensive play by John Manga. Well, with the Fresno State defensive starters, here's legendary head coach Jim Sweeney. At defensive end, we have a man named Tyler Klutz. With a name like that, you've got to be good, and he is an outstanding player. My favorite player is linebacker Marcus Riley, who's an outstanding guy, and a guy, if you watch, he'll take you the ball every down. In the defensive secondary, our only returning senior and outstanding player is a man named Damon Jenkins, who will also be an outstanding participant today. Coach Sweeney with over 200 wins, yet not in the Hall of Fame. Fantastic numbers for Jim Sweeney. And how about this for James Johnson? Johnson with a chance. Touchdown, 67 yards. How about that for a start for the Wildcats? Well, we talked about it earlier. 
Just being able to run the football is key for K-State. And here you saw him come around the corner untouched. Not what the locals expected. Here you see Johnson, they get a good seal block on the edge. Jordy Nelson does a good job of kicking out, and the rest is Johnson doing it all by himself. Supposedly he runs a 4 2 8. He definitely looks like it there, Eric. So the troubles continue for Fresno State against the run. They're in the bottom third defending the run, and the beat continues. They just get gouged with a 67 yard scamper for James Johnson. And that, well, if he smiled much, that would put a smile on Ron Prince's face. We have had one series. It is 7 0 Kansas State. Fresno State will have the ball when we come back. Kansas State, the Wildcats taking it to the Bulldogs early. We haven't even played three minutes and already a score. Yeah, and we talked about the things that Jordy Nelson can do. Catching the football, he also was very unselfish and a huge block here on the corner, kicking out Damon Jenkins and James Johnson taking it the distance the rest of the way. Impressive job by Jordy Nelson. These are the things that you're going to need to do at the next level in the National Football League. You're going to look for guys that can come out, catch as well as block, and also play special teams, and that's what makes Jordy Nelson so impressive. Josh Cherry kicks it off. It is a short, high arcing kick taken at the 16 by Clifton Smith. The fifth year senior from right here in Fresno scoots out to the 34 yard line, a return of 18 yards. Fresno State is playing without the nation's leading kickoff returner, A.J. Jefferson, suffered an ankle injury in practice, huge. and he will not be available all afternoon long. There's the starting quarterback. Tom Brandstater looking for his signature win as the signal caller with the Bulldogs. Yeah, and I think it's going to be important for him to get the ball into Matthews' hands. That's that offensive line. That's, that's the best unit on this football team, establishes a rhythm in that run game, and that's going to be the key for Brandstater's success today. Fresno State, they average 31 points per game. Lanye Miller is the deep back behind Brandstater, and they give it to him. Big chance! For Miller, still on his feet, and finally hogtied and brought down at the 21-yard line, but not before a pickup of 45 yards. Well, we just talked about it. We said, hey, the offensive line is their best unit on this football team. Take a look up front. Everybody's getting on a guy and moving him out of the way. They're not just sitting there stalemate. And then the rest is Miller's job. He just finds a lane, hits it downhill, and tries to use a stiff arm. Give credit to the safety of Kansas State. Great job of using the sideline by Gary Chandler and making sure that that play doesn't go the distance. Yeah, we were wondering whether or not we'd see the electric freshman Ryan Matthews. Haven't seen him yet, but maybe they don't need him. Lanye Miller with a fantastic run to kickstart this offense. Grant Stater, his pass out to the left is complete to Marlon Moore. Now let's introduce you to the Fresno State offensive starters, and let's go back to Jim Sweeney. At quarterback, we have a man named Tom Brandstetter, who should have an outstanding day today. I think he should have his best game of the year. At center, we have a man moving from tackle, who's been a three-year starter, Ryan Wendell. And Ryan is going to do a great job today, as he has throughout his Bulldog career. Wendell has started 46 consecutive games now. He's been a real bulwark right in the middle of that line for the last four seasons. After the throw to Marlon Moore, picks up seven yards, second down and three. Inside handoff to Miller, who barrels forward for another Fresno State force down. With the K-State defensive starters, here's Steve Klein. Hello, I'm Steve Klein, nose guard from Kansas State. Uh, here to introduce Rob Jackson, Rob Action Jackson, and uh, number 51, Justin Rowland who can carry the whole team on his back. And uh, at, at corner, we got number 22, locked down Justin McKinnon. And uh, I want to give a special thanks to uh, my brother Brian, who just had a baby yesterday. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> First down and goal. Pass is complete inside the five. J.E. Ajira 2-2 with his first catch, brought down by Ray Cheatham. You know, it's a, the alignment is going to be very important. The easiest throwing football is over the middle. So when we're going to see man-to-man -man cover down the red zone with no help in the middle, it's going to be important for the secondary for K-State to get inside and take away the easiest throwing football is right over the middle. 
This game is vital for Kansas State. They need to win to become bowl eligible. And they do not want to come out laying an egg here early after scoring a touchdown on their first drive. With Fresno State knocking at the door. Miller with another carry. This time he swung and brought down. Football's loose, and the Wildcats have it. Now, there's never a penalty behind going into that pile and trying to get that ball, so everybody should be on the ground trying to grab at that ball. And it is Kansas State football. They dodge a major bullet early. Well, I tell you what, the play, the play was when that fullback was blown up in the hole on that particular play. It made it very difficult for Lanya Miller now to find a place. There you see it, a good kick out block by Rob Jackson. And this excellent team tackling right there by Roland and the rest of those guys out there. Impressive, impressive opportunity there to go in and strip the ball out on the tackle. One man secures the tackle, somebody else comes in and tries to rip it out of there. Great job by K-State. It was Chidubamu Abana who came up with that loose football. And a turnover gives the ball back over to K-State. Freeman. Pass is short, looking for the tight end, Michael Kuski. Great coverage on the top. He wanted to go to Jordy Nelson, but good job up top. Jamming him and getting in. Knocked him out of, knocked him out of bounds. So he had to come to a second check, second read, and there was nothing there. It's a great job by the secondary for Fresno State on Jordy Nelson. Kansas State coming out of the Big 12 North. Three wins and five losses in conference play. But they've been really scuffling in recent weeks. They've lost three straight games, and they've been struggling to get full eligible. Well, and we talked to Ron Prince, and he said, what's been the problem? He said our secondary's been giving them some big plays, but not today. They're so far, they've done a great job. Movement up front, and a whistle stops the play. You know, we talked about Gary Chandler's tackle. That was a huge tackle there when Lanya Miller was going down the sideline. Not a lot of coaches emphasized using the sideline to tackle, but great job of Gary Chandler corralling Lanya Miller to the sideline and not giving up a big play. Made a difference in this drive. Allowed the defense to live the fight another day and eventually forced the turnover. Frank White is today's referee. He is going to let us know what the situation is. Well, from the looks. All right, the snap. Ball start on the offense. After the goal, second down. Yeah, I was going to say, whenever you see the other team, one unit clapping, you know it's against the other. So it was clearly a, a false start there on K-State. Gets out close to the first down. It's going to be a little bit short. A pickup of 12. Now let's go back to the studio and get an update from Stan Barrett. All right, Eric, this Taco Bell studio update takes us to Morgantown. It's UConn of West Virginia for the Big East title. And UConn strikes first. Tyler Lorenzen to Brad Kanye. And it's 7-0 Huskies over West Virginia. Thank you so much, Stan. What an important game for West Virginia. They didn't want to come out slowly, I can guarantee you that. Third down and one. Leon Patton is sworn he's not going to get the first down. How about that for a stop? Trevor Shambly, one of the first to corral him. Great keep job. Him getting the first down. Great job by Marcus Riley on the fullback. We saw two scenarios now where the fullback has been defeated in the hole and caused the play to bounce. Jordy Nelson with the, kick, the, the crack block, but it was Marcus Riley who forced the ball to bounce outside and allow the Fresno State defense to recover and make the play. So the punt team comes on. This is Tim Rayer. High kick. Clifton Smith underneath it makes the first man miss. Smith's got already a wall. He's got a wall. touchdowns this year. And Smith, such a dynamic player, gets out to the 48-yard line, a 17-yard return of a 53-yard punt. Marcus Perry finally with the tackle. All right, a timeout on the field. When we come back, we'll see the Bulldogs once again on offense. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Volkswagen. When you get into a Volkswagen, it gets into you. McDonald's and the new AT&T, your world delivered. 
Well, this is the final day this football season that the campus of Fresno State will be able to shine and, and cheer on their Bulldogs, but it's not the final regular season game for Fresno State. They still have a game next week on Friday night in Las Cruces against New Mexico State. Hal Mummy. Hal Mummy's air raid offense. Yep. Anthony Harding has checked in for the first time in the backfield for Fresno State. They fake it to him, and they want a bunch. Heading down the right sideline, incomplete. Looking for a Jared Tutu, and the pass just a little bit too strong. It was there to be caught. It was definitely there to be caught. Again, not enough emphasis at the line of scrimmage. McKinney might have got away with a little arm bar there, but not much contact at all. Just needs to make that catch by Jared Tutu. Impressive I made that uh, pronunciation, weren't you? I was very <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I was wondering what you're going to have up your sleeve. <laughs> There's Justin McKinney, 69 tackles, three interceptions on the season. He has had a solid senior year. Impressive year. They give to Clifton Smith, the man they call Batman in these circles. And he's spun out of bounds by Justin Rowland, number 51. There's Ron Prince in his second season. Went seven and six a year ago, losing in a bowl game against Rutgers at the Texas Bowl. This year, a record of five and six, trying to even up his mark yeah. today here in Fresno. And he's following the legend, you know, and, and Bill Snyder, and he's doing a great job. He he stuck he stuck with the, the junior college transfer options because there's a there's more JC schools in the state of Kansas than anywhere else in the country. So he understands the importance, and he's also a former junior college transfer himself. So he's built that program around some JC transfers, and, and he's done a great job. Grant Stater, line drive, pass is caught to Marlon Moore. Moore, his second grab, a pickup of 14 before Gary Chandler brings him down. Probably the fastest player on the team. I tell you right now, he understands how to run routes, and great job of getting down and using his hands to come back to the football. Beat a good corner in Justin McKinney as well, so this is going to be a good matchup. We talked about Jordy Nelson. Marlon Moore and Justin McKinney going against each other is going to be a good matchup. We've got to keep our eyes close to this one. Well, Moore will need to step up a bit today. Their leading receiver, Bear Pasco, their tight end, will not play. He is dealing with an ankle injury. Inside run, Ryan Matthews has checked in, and he is brought down after a pickup of two. Let's go back to the studio and stand for it. All right, Eric, UConn at West Virginia. We showed, the, showed you the Connecticut touchdown. Well, West Virginia came right back. Pat White hooked up with Darius Renaud on a long pass, and White carries it in himself. And the Mountaineers have tied it up at seven now, nine minutes to go in the first quarter. Thank you, Stan. Press opportunity here for Fresno State after the two-yard first down run by Ryan Matthews. Empty backfield. Five receivers in the game. Grant Stater has a man wide open. And again, it's Shea Iajira 2-2. His second grab, a pickup of 17. You know, he's uncovered. He comes off the line. Great job by Branstater recognizing it. No one got their hands on Marlon Moore. And it's going to, so I said, Jared Tutu, it's going to be important for the secondary to get their hands on the receivers. Anytime you're dealing with a spread offense, knock the timing of the route off by jamming the receivers, and you'll have success. No one touched him. Great job and catch by the quarterback and receiver combination there. First drive for Fresno State ended with a fumble inside the 10 yard line. Once again, they're knocking on the door against this Kansas State defense, and a flag flies. Might have got Cole Popovich moving just a little bit there. Five the snap, false start on the offense. Number 72, five-yard penalty, remains first down. There is Pat Hill on his 11th season. 82 wins, just 55 losses. He has 10 wins against BCS conference schools in the last decade. That is the most of any non-BCS program. I tell you, he's he has that any place, any time uh, philosophy. And, uh, you know, I think that that philosophy may have to change a little bit when you start looking at the KUs and the and the Hawaii's and some of their schedules that they've taken, you know, they've taken on this year. When, in fact, some of the, that, those actual schedules may affect his, <laughs> his destiny this year. So... That philosophy may have to be slightly altered just a tad bit. Eric. Well, for the most part, this is a rarity. You, you rarely see a BCS conference school come here and right. play at Bulldog Stadium. They generally have to go on the road right. in tough places. Already this year, they've played down to College Station against Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. They've had to go up to Eugene and play against the Oregon Ducks. 
That's right. a tough road to hold. It's a tough road to hold. And, you know, whenever you play teams of that caliber, you're going to sustain some injuries. And Coach, Coach Hill was adamant that they haven't sustained any injuries because of those games. But it's just a matter of time when you, when you face a number of opponents like that that you will sustain some injuries. And it can be a factor down the road. Yeah, one of the big themes for the Bulldogs this year is it's been a battle of attrition. They have lost guys left and right all season long. Justin Rowland with a good stop and Clifton Smith just blew up that play for a loss of seven. Great job by Rowland identifying the quarterback will show you the screen play before anyone else on the field because generally quarterbacks don't backpedal when they're going to pass the ball. They'll drop step and then, then, they'll, then they'll set up to throw the ball. But when they're backpedaling, you can tell right away as a defensive player that it's clearly going to be a screen. And great job by Rowland reacting to it. Is that something you learned at Washington State or is that an NFL pickup that you got? Oh, it's definitely an NFL pickup. Definitely is something you learn very quickly about quarterbacks at the NFL level. Third and 21. Bulldogs going backwards. Randstader designed run. And he picks up two. Good stop by Ian Campbell, the junior from Cimarron, Kansas. Generally, when you see empty backfield and all the wide receivers are spread out, you're generally going to get all goals by the wide receivers, or you're going to get a quarterback, quarterback draw. And surprisingly enough, they opted with the quarterback draw. And we haven't seen that a lot from Brandstader this year. So it was a shock to see them try to run there. Here is Clint Stitzer, just a fantastic story. This kid has never received anything except for an A during his four <laughs> years at Fresno State. He is a finalist for the Dratty Award, which goes basically to the best and the brightest among the athletes. It is the academic Heisman. Right. And well, he, he breaks out the abacus and the, uh, he uses the Pythagorean theorem, and he makes that <laughs> field goal right there to put Fresno State on the board. 7-3 is our score. The local trailing by four. Four. After the field goal by Clint Stitzer, it is a four-point lead for Kansas State. Fresno State able to salvage something of that drive after continually going backwards once they got close <laughs> to the 20-yard line. You know what? They're, they're in this ball game, and you know what? Credit to Pat Hill and his staff for getting these guys ready to go because they are they've came out and established a tone very early in the ball game. Everyone talks about Fresno State and Pat Hill's philosophy of playing as difficult a schedule as possible, but in recent years. They haven't done very well against BCS Conference schools. They've lost their last seven games against teams that come, teams that come from BCS Conferences. Stitzer kicks it off. James Johnson on the return. And Johnson, another big play. Out to the 40-yard line. Make it the 42, a return of 37 yards. Let's go down to the field with Vince with more on the kicker for Fresno State. Clint Stitzer, if he keeps kicking 47 yarders, he's going to have a future in the league, but he's probably better served in the business world when you consider his academic success. As Eric mentioned before the break, earned his undergraduate degree with a perfect 4.0 GPA. Currently uh, going after his MBA in the prestigious Craig School of Business here at Fresno State. Also a finalist for the Warpole Trophy, a national award that honors the top football player who excels on the field, in the classroom, and in the community. And Vince, it was Stitzer who actually pushed Johnson out of bounds and was credited with that tackle. Pass is low. It's going to be called a completion to Ernie Pierce. Let's go back to the studio at Stan Barrett. All right, Eric, it's Bedlam, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Sam Bradford going to Allen Patrick. Patrick has also run one in for a touchdown. Oklahoma State virtually assured Big 12 South title, even if they lose this game. But they'll definitely get it if they win. And then West Virginia and UConn is Pat White to Darius Reynolds. And it's 14-7 Mountaineers trying to win the Big East. Well, maybe a bit of a wake-up call with UConn scoring early against West Virginia. And say goodbye to Leon Pat. Oh, this is too easy for K-State. Pat rumbles 45 yards around the left side for another long rushing touchdown well, for the and, Wildcats. Yeah, when, and, the, and, and right now, Fr Fresno State is, is last in, in the pack, in the, in the whack, should I say, in, in rush defense, and you'll see why, because many of the defenders are now getting on blocks, and they're not able to defeat one-on-one -on -one blocks. They're just getting themselves washed out of the play, and if you're going to be successful against the run, you're going to have to take your, your, uh, your blocker and defeat him and make the play on the running back. Right now, you're not seeing that. Patton with a 45-yard touchdown run. Combine that with James Johnson's 67-yard touchdown. And K-State, they have two touchdowns on the ground covering 112 yards already.
just a little bit over 10 minutes into the game. And no one's touched him. You know, that's the, that's the thing that, that's most noticeable is they're going through the holes without anyone being anyone touching them. And if you're going to be successful against the run, you have to fit the plays correctly, and you must defeat the, the blockers when they get into your body. That's the key part about defending the run is not allowing the blockers to get into your body. Once they get into your body, Eric, they own you. Ron Prince, a former offensive lineman, can appreciate those blocks, actually. Well, can't say it enough times. This is just a, a huge game for Kansas State. If they want their season to continue, they need to win to become bowl eligible and, and virtually be assured of going to a bowl game. Only the slimmest possible chances, though, they wouldn't go to a bowl game if they get the, the bowl eligibility in six wins. Right, and, you know, we... With their, what, there's discussions about what bowl game they might go to. You know, there's discussions about the Independence Bowl and the, it being their 25th anniversary and K-State being the first participants to participate in that bowl game 25 years ago. So it makes a lot of sense for them to go to that Independence Bowl. But they need to get a win today to assure themselves of at least that bowl and nothing else. And you talk to the people in the know, and in Kansas State, they really believe that if they win today's game, they're either going to go to the Petro Sun Independence Bowl the Insight Bowl possibly in Tempe, or maybe a return trip to the Texas Bowl, a game that they went to a year ago and lost to against Rutgers. Low kick bounces, picked up by Devin Wiley. And Wiley gets out to the 35-yard line. Well, tonight, national title hopes are on the line, and Heisman candidates will be leading their teams onto the field, and you can find it on ABC. Chase Daniel leads the Missouri Tigers against Todd Reesing and the undefeated Kansas Jayhawks. The winner moves on to the Big 12 championship game and possibly a chance for the national title. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines. As part of Rivalry Week presented by Remington at 8 Eastern time. Well, and I had a chance to watch Missouri play Texas Tech and Chase Daniel, his ability to create plays with his legs, I think is going to be a key in that ball game. And then getting Jeremy Macklin at least 15 to 20 touches, very, very pivotal if they're going to have any success and beating KU. Jeremy Macklin is an absolute star, and he's going to make a difference in that ball game sometime th th this evening. Long pass and catch, Jamel Hamler with the grab and a pickup of 29 yards. Well, we talked about it early on. We talked about getting their hands on the receivers. Both secondaries have struggled this year in the passing game. K-State in particular with their safeties getting out of position oftentimes. A lot of that has to do with the underneath coverage. Guys getting their hands on the receivers, helping the safeties out. They can only cover so much ground. If they're not getting any help by being the receivers being rerouted, they're not going to have success out there. Clifton Smith takes the direct snap, and the senior pushes forward for a pickup of three. They try and do a lot of different things with Clifton Smith. He's a multifaceted guy. Very versatile. He can do a lot of different things. Yeah, and I, you know, I expect to see Matthews in there, but Clifton Smith has basically done a great job in replacing Matthews, and I think that's the guy, if you really want to talk about a rhythm and establishing a run game, not have to really worry about is the guy 100% or not, I think you have to do it with Miller. Yeah, we've only seen Matthews carry the ball twice so far in this first quarter. Remember, he's knocking on the door of 1,000 yards on the season, just his first year in college football. Marlon Moore shakes a tackle down the sideline. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Yet another big play, 34 yards on this catch and run. Now, we talked about the matchup. We talked about the matchup between Moore and, and, and McKinney, and, and there it is. It showed up. Justin McKinney's got to do is he's got to break down early at the sideline once he realizes he's the only man there that can make the tackle. But if he continues to run and, and, and runs by the, the, the receiver, he's pretty much the only guy that can make that play. And he's got to do a better job of breaking down early and making that play. Well, we have had big plays aplenty already. Four plays of 30-plus yards in today's game. We haven't even played 12 minutes. <laughs> Three of those four plays went for touchdowns. Stitzer, extra point, no problem. Bulldogs answer a score with a score of their own. When you're in one-on-one -on -one coverage, what you must do is understand, I got a breakdown early, and here you see McKinney make a bad decision on the tackling. He gets his head behind the ball carrier, and the rest is history. Moore's down the sideline, gets a good block by his receiver, but you have to keep your head in front and break down on that tackle in order to have give yourself a chance to make that play, Eric. Tom Branstader now 
with 13 touchdowns thrown on the season. And, and that man right there, Marlon Moore, has caught four of them. As Fresno State, they try and get a big program win against the BCS Conference School. Well, they have problems on the back end. That's the secondary. I think people call it the back end. But if they can't do a better job, and speaking of K-State, if breaking down, getting their hands on the receivers, disrupting the timing, it's going to be a shootout today. And that is the last thing that Ron Prince wants. He knows his team can score. They average 35 points a game but he needs to, to get some sign that his defense is coming together. And there's been some plays and yardage that's been also gained on the special team side of things. There's been some big runs and things that almost have popped on both sides of the ball, so special teams is going to be, be the difference in this ball game as well. Fresno State just trying to keep adding to the defensive woes for Kansas State. Last week, K-State gave up 49 points against Mizzou. The week before, they gave up 73 to Nebraska. Stitzer's kickoff is going to go out of bounds, and that is a no-no. It'll be good field position for K-State. Well, Fresno State, they are no strangers to big-time wins against big-time schools. This is 2001. David Carr led a season opening three consecutive wins against first Colorado, then against Oregon State here at Bulldog Stadium, and then the following week at Camp Randall Stadium against the Wisconsin Badgers. Opening season, three wins against BCS schools. Impressive. What a way to start the year. <laughs> Give credit to Pat Hill and his coaching staff for getting his players ready year in and year out. But you think that strategy may not fly anymore? No, I just don't think, you know, the key to, to, to college football in my mind. Freeman's pass is caught by Nelson out of bounds at the 45. The, the key to college football right now in my mind is getting to a bowl game, getting your institution exposure. And, that, and that's a national exposure that everybody in, at, at your university wants is national exposure. Get into a bowl game is key. You know, sometimes you're going to have to take on the lesser opponent. That, that's what the, the bowl committees are really looking at are the number of victories at the end of the season. Uh, that's an example of what we're talking about for Kansas. Kansas has made it undefeated all the way this season, but look at the teams they're playing. It's, it's hardly the best of the best. Yeah, and, you know, nothing against Central Michigan, and I know, Eric, you think highly of Central Michigan's program in the years <laughs> past. They've been pretty well renowned. But Jordy Nelson, another big but, gainer. But Florida International and Toledo, these are teams Toledo, that have gone on KU K, 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 K schedule. Now, obviously, the athletic director scheduled these out a few years out, but, you know, they took advantage of that. And, and, and kudos to them for, you know, taking advantage of their opponents. Whoever stepped out on the field, they went out and played the game. And I think that's the philosophy that the more institutions are going to have to start to adopt is, look, we got to get some W's so we can get our university some exposure. And when you get that national exposure, it means big dollars. That's paid off for the Jayhawks and then some this year. Everyone around the world is talking about them in their game tonight against Missouri. James Johnson, a pickup of one. Kadir Brown with the stop. Sophomore from Lake Elsinore. You want to see more than one defender on the ball, here In that particular instance, you saw one defender on the ball. Everybody needs to fly to the football. You need to get three, four helmets on the ball. That, as a defensive coordinator, that's what you're always looking for is to, get, to see guys hustling and get to the ball. Look at the numbers already put up for these two schools. 180 total yards for K-State. Fresno State hot on their heels. We've already had six plays of 20 yards or more. On the reverse, Deion Murphy. Good recognition for the Bulldog defense, and he's dropped for a loss. Damian Owens on the stop. Great pursuit of getting to the football. What you probably found is you saw Fresno State in a zone defense, so they weren't affected by the reverse as much. It's often when you get, get in a man-to-man -man coverage, which Fresno State has been playing more of in, in the past few games, that you can generally fool a defense. But in that particular instance, these guys were in a zone defense, so they were able to react to the reverse very well. They need to stop here, big down. Third down and nine. Freeman flushed. He can run. And he gets the first down. He's got good feet for a 250-pounder. 
Very good feet. Reminds me a lot of Donovan McNabb, his arm strength and his ability to move around in the pocket. Like to see he, how if, if he can throw to his left, moving to his left. There you saw him run, but generally when quarterbacks move to the left, they don't like to throw the ball, and good decision by him to pick up the first down. On third and nine, he gets 10. Just a sophomore. Well, he's already know, put up great numbers, but he's still got just um, and, he, and, he st and he struggled last year. You know, he came out and early on in the season, and they were just trying to protect him and not for ask him to make any, any big plays. And to his credit, he, he bounced back from that. Marcus Riley submarines in and makes the stop for a loss of two. This is the difference between last season and this season. Yeah, Josh yeah. Freeman. It was it was that number right there, a 15, should I say? It was that number, and he struggled. He struggled last year early on, throwing eight interceptions in his first five games. But he settled down. They found a way to get him in a rhythm to where he got rid of the ball much quicker, and he had more success. And now this year, they're, they're taking the they're taking the reins off a little bit and allow him to make plays. Pitch out right side. Johnson pursued. And pushed out of bounds. Nothing doing there with that good team speed for Fresno State. A gain of two they're going to call. Great job of keeping his shoulders going east and west, not allowing him to get his shoulders going north and south because if James Johnson gets his shoulders going north and south, as we've seen so far, it's over with. So good job by Fresno State of stretching the play to the sideline and allowing everybody to hustle to the football. Better find Nelson. There he is. He's a playmaker. Freeman. Incomplete. Ernie Pierce can't hang on. Now, they did a great job on Nelson right there. Nelson tried to go down the seam. Great job by the defender of rerouting Nelson off the route. And it forced him to go to a second throw, his, his second route which was outside and there was no one there to make the play. But Pierce, Pierce had a chance to make it. Great job by, by Owens getting his hand in there. Here, why, look at the jam right there. That's what you need to get on the receiver all day long. If you do that, you'll have success. Credit to those guys. The snap's no good. It's a busted play. Just throwing it up for grabs. And it's an interception. It's an interception, just the third pick of the season for Fresno State. Moses Harris with the grab. It was Marcus Wild Watts who just had to throw it up after the snap <laughs> skipped away from his fingertips. He'd have been better off just throwing it out of bounds because there was absolutely nowhere to throw that ball, and they were fortunate that that ball wasn't ran back. Once you find no one open, just throw it away. Yeah, the snap wasn't that bad. Watts just couldn't come to grips with it. Long snap for Corey Adams, and it looked like the snap was okay. I saw Watts go in before the before in the pregame for some particular reason with the trainer. I don't know if that had anything to do with that with the hold or not, but it looked like the hold was a pretty good hold, pretty good snap, should I say? Watts is one of the starting safeties for Kansas State, but he has good hands. That's why they have him as the holder. But that time he can't hang on. Ryan, Ryan Matthews. Matthews, his third carry of the game, a pickup of four. In the 17-yard line. Boy, interesting turn of events, I tell you. <laughs> Number 39, Matthews Lon coming Hood. out of the game. He's replaced by Lanye Miller. It'll be interesting to see how much playing time Matthews gets with that sprained ankle he's working with. Didn't play at all last game that Fresno State played against Hawaii two weeks ago. They give it to Miller. And he gets out. Close to the 20-yard line, maybe the 19, before John Kulik makes the stop. Generally, what you'll see after, after a turnover, you'll see some some sort of deep pass. See what we get when we come back. We've played 15 minutes of football. Kansas State, they have two touchdowns, but they haven't created much separation against Fresno State. 14-10 is our score. Second quarter coming your way after these messages. Welcome back, everyone, to the San Joaquin Valley. It has been a, a productive first quarter for both clubs. Kansas State with two long touchdown runs. 
and Fresno State with a bunch of long drives. They had a fumble inside their 10 the first time, but they also have a field goal and a touchdown to their credit, and they still have the football. They will begin with the ball on the 20-yard line and a third down and three. As we start the second quarter. Clifton Smith in the backfield alongside Tom Branstetter. Bulldogs want to throw. And this is going to be close, but I don't think the Branstetter got enough. It's got to be short, yeah. Two-yard line. It's really short. Shy of a first down. Brandon Balcom is the man who kind of closed things up and looked like he made the saving tackle to keep Branstetter away from the first down line. Well, we finally got a, our first three and out there. Kansas State, they are fantastic returning punts, leading the country 22 yards per return. Jordy Nelson only has five returns, but two of them have gone for touchdowns. Who do they kick it to? It's not going to go Nelson's way. Instead, it's Deion Murphy who runs out of bounds. Might be a penalty the there. He, he, he looked as if he waved more fair catch. Well, there's a penalty in the backfield, too, where the punt was made. Oh, that, that's, that could be big. Running or another penalty at the 42. Yeah. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's roughing. He was definitely blocked into definitely it. At least there was contact. Yeah, there was contact there. It still should be a first down. It was fourth and one. So no matter what the penalty is, if it's against Kansas State, it's going to be a first down. Well, for and then State. will the penalties offset though because of the the, uh, the illegal fair catch signal and that guy advancing the ball. That's Lauren Bell, who is down on the field, being tended to by the training staff for Fresno State. Well, with the timeout on the field, let's use it productively and go back to the studio and check in with Stan Barrett. And Aaron, Notre Dame and Stanford, first road game for Notre Dame since October 6th. And Jimmy Clausen punches it in from two yards out. And the Irish strike first, but Stanford comes right back. Anthony Kimball with the touchdown. The Cardinal and seven apiece. Notre Dame won the last five in the series. Well, we uh, just had an interesting call. They call a personal foul against Kansas State, and that's going to give Fresno State yeah. the first down. They're going to keep the football. So Ron Prince trying to get a, a further explanation. He thought his team was going to get the ball back, but they called the personal foul, running into the kicker, and that results in a first down for Fresno State. I, I think it's the right call. I, I think the fact that it occurred before the illegal fair catch signal, and I also think that the guy was blocked into the kick, into the punter, but it's still a first down. It, either way, any way you look at it, it's still a first down. Lauren Bell, redshirt freshman from Simi Valley, being helped off the field. Now, mind you now, the, the wingman is actually blocking the defender into the punter. But at the same time, the defender needs to understand that he cannot run in there unless he has a legitimate shot at the ball. He can't allow the, the blocker to, pu to push him into the punter. Well, there also was a penalty further down the field where the, the catch was made on the punt return. Right. And we originally thought that it was an illegal fair catch signal. But right. what actually was called was his delay of game. They had too many men on the field. So Kansas many, State had 12 really? guys wow. on the field returning that punt. So both of those calls going against the Wildcats. Interesting. So instead of giving the football away, the Bulldogs have not bad field position. Coming out of the backfield, catch is made. Isaac Kickner, the backup tight end, makes the catch and rumbles across the 50-yard line, a pickup of 20 yards. Well, he's filling in for Bear Pass going. We talked about rhythmic passing and this is a key example of it. Lyon Stater, Brand Stater to get out the pocket and get rid of the ball and get it to one of his better players. Now, Kittner is more or less a H-back, if you will, more so than a tight end, but he's filling in just fine right now for Bear Pasco. Yeah, this is an offense that likes to use the tight end. And with no Bear Pasco in his 38 catches, that's going to be more opportunities for Kittner and Tapia. Brand Stater has a man wide open.
after a gain of 20, a pickup of 29. <laughs> and if, if we're going to go out and play sandlot football, let me know, because basically what guys are doing, they're just allowing receivers to run downfield untouched. Justin Rowland was inside alignment on, on Moore there. Could have had a chance to get his hands on, but just ran right by him and allowed Moore to get back inside and, may, and allow Branson to make the easiest throw in football, which is right over the middle. Moore already close to 100 yards, and we're just getting started in the second quarter. He's got 84 yards on four catches. Clifton Smith tries the left side, cut back, and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage if that. Back to the line of scrimmage. John Hulick, number 39. John Hulick, another stop. John Hulick's an undersized linebacker. They, out, they call him Little Wally after his, after his linebacker coach, who, whose name is Wally. The guy is undersized as much as much like his coach was in college. He understands the importance of flying around, getting to the football. And, and in this particular instance, size doesn't matter as long as you get there and you use proper technique to make plays. Just 5'11", 217 pounds playing in the Big 12. They fake to Smith. It's Kittner. No signal yet. He's down inside the one. They may have to look at that one. They may want to take a look at that one. That looked pretty close. What McKinney wants to do on that particular play, he doesn't want to tackle him low. Because if he tackles the running back low, he falls over. You want to tackle him up high and knock him sideways. And here's a case where McKinney gets too low and Kidner falls over the top. Oh, that ball comes out. And then it crosses the plane. The ball comes out and then it crosses the plane. I don't think Third. the sideline judge saw that. Well, every play in college football is reviewed. And they're going to review this one a little bit more closely. The play is under review. Well, I think they're going to have to look at that one because that one's right on the goal line. That's a touchdown. Yeah, it looked to me, if you're going to call that a fumble, which it was, yeah. he landed on it with the ball on the end exactly. line. Exactly, that's a fumble. So Pat Hill definitely interested in this verdict. With a timeout in the field, we'll send you to a break. We'll come back with the results of this review in a moment. Welcome back. Well, here is the results of the most recent review. Video Third down to goal. Ah, a little bit surprising. Huh? Well, they didn't have they didn't have enough evidence, not not, not enough video evidence to, to turn that thing over. That's well, not the worst thing in the world for Pat Hill's team. They no. still have the ball <laughs> right there on the doorstep. This is what I thought might be conclusive enough. Fumble. It's just not, you just can't see it from the right angle to tell if that ball's actually crossed the line. You can tell it's on there, near it, but you can't tell if it's crossed it. All right, it's third down and goal. Brad Stater keeps it himself. Brad Stater keeps the ball. No signal as of yet. And he's in. And he's in. So the touchdown is a, a play delayed, but it finally goes on the board for Fresno State. Well, you know, we talked to Pat Hill, you know, pregame, and it's a little bit about what they've gone through this year. And he said, you know what, we've been decimated with injuries, and guys have been dinged up all year long, and we've, we've got a, a young team. And <laughs> sure enough, they've, he've got, he's got these guys out here competing against a fine Big 12 football team, and it's impressive. And James, remember, this drive was extended because of the roughing the punter penalty. Yep. The Bulldogs yep. are trying to give it back to the Wildcats. But the penalty prolonged the drive that results in a touchdown. Stitzer, extra point, no problem. And the Bulldogs take their first lead, 17-14. Any place, any time. <laughs> Preferably here. <laughs> Tom Brandstater has completed his last eight losses. He's only had one incompletion the entire afternoon. Well, give Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator, credit. He's allowed him to come out and establish a rhythm. They got it going early on with the run game, but now they know, okay, listen, we got to get Brand Stater to settle down and allow him to make some good short throws and allow his receivers to make some plays with their legs, and that's what they've been able to do so far. So give credit to the coaches up, up in the booth right now. And Brand Stater, he is 
been very anxious to get this game underway and to win something because he's really never won a very important game for Fresno State. He has never beaten the BCS team. He has never beaten anyone for the most part that has a winning record. He has one win against a team with a winning record. That was Nevada. So he needs a signature win under his belt. Let's go down to Vince. On that punt that uh, the drive was extended on because of the penalty, Lauren Bell of uh, Fresno State was injured on that play. It's a right knee injury, and the training staff tells me he will not return today out for the rest of the afternoon. Well, that's going to hurt them big time because they've already lost A.J. Jefferson. And, uh, you know, coming into this game, it, you talked about Jordy Nelson, but Deion Murphy is a, a fine receiver. Dan Daniel Gonzalez is a fine receiver. So how they're going to match up in the secondary of Fresno State, it's going it's to be very interesting to see how they handle that injury. Stitzer's going to get a bit leg weary. He's kicking off once again. This one, a strong kick. His best of the bunch all the way into the end zone. James Johnson's going to take it out. And Johnson with a chance. Cut back out to the 42, and we may have a face mask at the end of the run. A 42-yard return for James Johnson. You know, at some point in time, you may want to kick it away from him. You think? Oh, yeah. I mean, He's a legitimate 4-3 guy, and you want it, you do not want to hit the ball in his hands. Holding on the receiving team, number 42, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Oh, I thought it was a face mess, but instead it goes against Kansas yeah, State. I still think there's some thought. Let's go to the studio and stand for it. All right, guys, an update between Georgia and Georgia Tech. Bulldogs have won the last six. They try to stay in position for an at-large BCF berth. That, that means nothing to Shard Choice. He's taking that one in for the Jack to put him up 7-3. But then Matthew Stafford, the quarterback keeper. Georgia 24-0 in non-conference regular season games with the Mark Rick leading right now. Thank you, Stan. Kansas State, they're going to be marched all the way back inside the 25-yard line to the 22. You know, before we went to break, I was talking about James Johnson and not kick, squib the ball. I don't think you want him with the ball in his hand. You do not want James Johnson with the ball in his hand. Johnson already with a thousand yard season. Seven yards behind Josh Freeman in the backfield. Busted play. Freeman's down and the ball is loose. Fresno State with the football. Tyler Clutz on the recovery. Charles Tolbert who came in and busted up the play and Tyler Clutz falls on the football. Had to be a blown assignment there because they come through untouched. Charles Tolbert comes through untouched. Good job of not only securing the sack, but coming over the top with the arm to chop the ball down and get the ball out and force a fumble. Just great effort there by Tolbert, but you, you have to block him. You can't allow him to come through there untouched. Two seniors combining on the big play. Tolbert, the senior from Reno, and Klutz, the senior from right here in Fresno. <laughs> Trying to capitalize. The give goes to Lanye Miller, Miller, who yeah, gets down three. to the two. You know, I like the play calling right now with Fresno State. They're utilizing the strength, which is their offensive line. And right now, those big guys up front are making holes there, creating some lanes for Lanye Miller and Clifton Smith to find ways to make yards. And they're, they're give credit to the offensive line right now. They do not have a 300-pounder on that offensive line. They've got a couple 260-pounders. The biggest guy is the left tackle, Bobby Lepery, who's 290. But for the most part, they're, they're smallish but scrappy up front. Ryan Matthews into the game and into the end zone. 13th touchdown of the season for the freshman from Bakersfield. Pat Hill is a former offensive line coach. You, you just can't help it. You don't, you don't have to worry about size and speed. You just got to look at fundamentals and technique. Look at the kickout blocks, the double team blocks right there for Miller to go through there untouched. Or should I say Matthew? Should I say just untouched? Pat Hill understands it's not about size and strength. It's about fundamentals and technique, and the guys that execute the most are going to win. 
Yeah, you talk to Pat Hill, and you get the impression he'd rather have a 260-pounder oh. with gravel in his guts <laughs> than a 320-pound behemoth who's not really doing much. He's adamant about you know emphasizing the proper fundamentals and the techniques to his, to his players. And, and if, if you do that and you're a player for Pat Hill, you'll be successful. Three unanswered touchdowns for Pat Hill's bunch. Two in the last minute, 36. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll talk to June Jones, the happy head coach for Hawaii. He'll be on the phone with us in a moment. Stan Moran back in our ESPN2 studio with an update on Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. It's Chris Brown with a touchdown. And the Sooners with a 14 point lead now in their in state rivalry. Battle for the Big East. It's West Virginia with a 17 7 lead on Connecticut. Pat White. 78 yards through the air, and he's also run for 29 yards in a touchdown there. Fresno State already bowl eligible, trying to really get the, the cherry on the top of their ice cream. They want to win today against a BCS conference school to give them their seventh win. They still have a game next week against New Mexico State. They could possibly get eight wins. And right now they have a 10-point lead over Kansas State. And another kickoff goes out of bounds. Well, the big story in the WAC all season long has been what's been going on down in Honolulu. June Jones, Colt Ben, and the entire Hawaii team, they're fantastic. Another big win yesterday against Boise State. They're still perfect, 11-0. And June Jones, the head coach for Hawaii, joins us now. June, welcome. Hey, aloha. Hey, aloha. What has the last 12 hours been like for you and the guys in your program? Well, it's been pretty uh, fantastic. Our guys have had a good focus all year. We kind of got to 8-0, and, and we kind of, you know, had an NFL mentality. As uh, James knows, we knew that we were going to have to win four games and get to the Super Bowl, and that's kind of where, where we're at. Hey, Coach, this is James Hasey. Hey, listen, I saw you get doused with the water yesterday. You didn't look too excited, and I know why. It's because you had that Washington Husky team coming in there uh, next week. Tell me, have you had a chance to watch a little bit of film of, uh, on Washington, and what have you thought? I've watched, I've watched a little bit of them so far, and I've watched a little bit on TV uh, when you guys had them. Uh, you know, their quarterback is very gifted, and, and, uh, and we're going to have to stop him, uh, and, and we're going to have to play as, as well as we did against Boise. They beat Boise earlier in the season and beat him pretty handily, and uh, we're going to have our hands full. Uh, I, I believe they'll probably win today and, and come in here kind of high and, and treating this like their bowl game. Coach, did you get the sense after last night's game with all the hullabaloo and everyone getting so excited that it's going to be difficult keeping you guys on the same page for the game against Washington this week? You know, I really don't think it, it is going to be just because we've been talking about it all year. We knew with Colts' uh, Heisman quest, we knew with any chance to get to the big dance, we had to go undefeated. And so, when, like I said, when we got to 8 no, we put it in a being, you know, an NFL mentality. It's losing, you're out. And and the guys have just stayed real focused. We had a huge win at Nevada, as you guys saw on ESPN2. And then last night uh, was, was about as, as well as we played defensively. And we have some real physical defense. And I think that that, uh, more so than anything else, is, is going to carry us uh, into the next two games. Freeman on third down and three, scrambles forward and gets the first down. Coach, I know you're not much into individual honors. I know it's all about the team. But when you look at what Colt Brennan did last week where he went down with concussion and came back and played a fantastic game last night, what do you think about his chance as far as winning the Heisman? And do you think he has a chance at all? Well, James, I think he'll be a finalist. I don't know if he'll win it. I certainly think he deserves to win it. He should have won it last year. When you really look at what he did last year, it was, a, it was amazing to me that he was not at New York at the, at the dinner. I mean, he, he had more yards than Troy Smith and Chad Henney combined in fewer attempts than both of them. More, more touchdown passes, more yards, everything. I, I've never heard of anything like that. We've seen Colt Brennan now for the last couple of years, and you see him every day in practice. In your standpoint, from such a great offensive mind like you have, what's the thing that separates him from everyone else? What makes Colt, Colt great? Well, he has two things that the great ones have. He has, a, a, he has great accuracy, a tremendous re, uh, release, a very quick release. And, and the third thing that he has, he has all the intangible stuff. He's a leader and a competitor. And uh, when you got those three things, you start to think about the Marinos and, and the Elways and those kind of guys. I think he's got to get a little bigger and sturdier to play in the National Football League. But he's got all that stuff they have. Hey, Coach, we're talking about the WAC all afternoon long. Your thoughts on the WAC and how it shook up 
are shook down this year with obviously the top heavy teams, but also teams at the bottom that weren't necessarily as strong as I'm sure you guys would like them to be. Well, the Western Athletic Conference, I've been saying forever, is, is one of the toughest ones to, to play in. We see everything. I mean, you're seeing Fresno State right now. We're a real physical team. Pat Hill uh, you know, has played anybody. We've played anybody. Boise's played anybody. And we've held our own. In fact, we're probably uh, uh, won more than we've lost against our conference opponents, including the bowl games the last four or five years. So I think that, that uh, you know, the conference has gotten better and better and better, and everybody is, is, is coming up. Uh, I was real interested in this game you guys are covering right now because Fresno, to me, even though they're real young in some areas, have, have made tremendous strides from last year's team. And I, I'm hoping Pat Hill gets a chance to come to the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Well, Coach, I really appreciate you taking time out. You guys had such a historic win, and everyone enjoyed watching you guys last night. I'm sure you're tired from the party in last night, but thank you for coming by and get the guys ready next week. All right, guys. I love will see you. Thanks, Coach. June Jones still with one more step to go with Hawaii. The big win against Boise State secured the WAC title, but they still need to win next week at home against the Washington Huskies. We'll take a timeout. Fresno State will have the football with a 10-point lead when we come back. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 7, Tony Dorsett. Before his arrival, Pittsburgh hadn't had a winning season in nine years. Dorsett rushed for 1,000 yards in four straight seasons, and by his senior year, Pittsburgh was the national champion. IBM, getting it done. That was our 25 greatest players presented by IBM, getting it done. Tony Dorsett at seven. There's six better than him. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty strong choice, though, at seven. I'll tell you what. It's a pretty strong choice. At the time that he was done, Tony Dorsett had the all-time rushing record in Division One. It since been passed a number of times, but when he was done, there was no one who had more yards than TD. I mean, that's a pretty strong list right there. That's a pretty impressive look. I have a little little bit of a question with number 11 at Charles Woods. The only defensive player to win the Heisman, how can he not be on the list? I'm talking to a former DB. Yeah, I, mean, I guess just, you're going to offend him. He's the only defensive player. But he's ahead of Earl Campbell? In case you're wondering who six is, we're going to have number six for you coming up in the second half. They don't go anywhere. Now, you're not going to get me to say anything bad about <laughs> Earl Campbell. <laughs> he was tough. Okay. Grant Stater wants to throw. Pass is complete. What new? Marlon Moore, another grab. Pick up of 13 yards. I think Brand Stater has found a weapon in Moore today. He is doing a great job of running, running his routes. But not only that, he's finishing in his routes, and he's coming back to the football and catching the ball with his hands. That's the most important, important part about this whole thing is catching the ball with your hands. He's coming back to the ball. He's not giving the defense a chance to beat him to the ball. Great already, route. Already five catches for the sophomore from Sacramento. Grant Stater has completed his last nine tosses. Make it 10 straight completions. Another one to Moore, his sixth round. Ray Cheatham on the stop, but a good gain on first. That's four drives. The ball resulted in scores for the Bulldogs. All very impressive drives on top of that. You, you see 65 yards, 87. They're, those aren't just fluke drives. Those are tr drives that the offense is actually earning. They're moving the ball, and they're being successful with the run and the pass and the balance. So great job by Coach McElwain and that uh, offensive staff. James, Fresno State would like to win. Kansas State, they need to win. Are you surprised at, at how poorly they're playing right now? As another big game for the Bulldogs, Anthony well, Harding. I know these guys don't get a lot of glitz and glamour, but right there on that particular play, the offensive line is just washing out the defensive line of Kansas State. But the, it's, that's the strength of their team. Look at the push right now. Look at their the number of red jerseys that are taking the white jerseys and just washing them out of the play. And it's really huge running lanes right there for the running backs to get into and make, and make huge, huge yards. It is a virtual certainty that if Kansas State wins today and becomes bowl <laughs> eligible, they will go to a bowl game. But they have to win first. I, I like how you emphasize virtual certainty. It's they a possibility are, they, they are would. there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a slight possibility they would be ignored, but for the most part, it's a certainty that they go to a bowl game, but they have to win. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. 
On the carry, Lanye Miller brought down by Moses Manu. Moses Manu, number 96, the offender. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 73. 15-yard penalty, remains first down. So Fresno State, they stub a toe. That's called on Kenny Avon. Let's go down to the field at Vince Welch. Guys, center Ryan Wendell anchors that offensive line, and uh, certainly, as you've noted, having great success through the air and also on the ground today, Fresno State's success begins with that man in the middle. Senior playing his final home game, made his 46th consecutive start today. That's a start in every game in which he's played, and here's the kicker, guys, no pun intended. He's also on the kick return team. How about that big fella oh. on the kick return team, huh? <laughs> I would not want the responsibility of trying to blow up the wedge that he's in. He actually has the distinction of being the WAC co-freshman of the year. Yeah. Alignment. Yeah. Freshman of the year in the conference. That's doing something. Brand Stater wants to throw on first and 25, and they get a bunch back. Shea Ajira Tutu with another grab. I tell you right now, Brand Stater, Brand Stater's in his zone. He's in his zone. His receivers are doing a good job of getting off the line and getting in the holes and making plays with their hands. They're not trying to catch the ball in their body because they're afraid of contact. They're going up, attacking the ball with their hands and being pro and protecting themselves on the way down. Just great, great effort by both sides, but by both the quarterback as well as the receiver. So on first and 25, they pick up 21. Now it's second down and manageable. Anthony Harding with the carry. And Harding gets the first down, down to the 31-yard line. Let's go back to the studio and stand for it. Eric, Tennessee and Kentucky, the Volunteers hoping to wrap up the SEC East. But well, the Cats making a game of it. Andre Woodson to Stevie Johnson, second touchdown hookup for them today. And it's a three-point game right now, five minutes to go in Lexington. Thank you, Stan. Those Kentucky Wildcats, they're Jekyll and Hyde. You don't know what you're going to get out of that punch. Well, Andre Woodson has been a Heisman candidate early in the year, and uh, unfortunately he may not get the invite now, but uh, he's put up some pretty decent numbers. Little razzle-dazzle. Incomplete looking for Kinter. Reggie Walker on the coverage, Adam, step for step. Great job of finishing on the play and not panicking. Sticking his hand in there, not swinging it, just sticking your hand into the receiver's hands and knocking the ball out of it. Just great poise by Reggie Walker right there. No need to panic. Just stick your hand in where his hand is, and you're, you're, you will knock the ball out. Great effort by Reggie Walker. A lot of times guys will panic and grab the receiver or arm bar and try to block them out or distract yeah, them from yeah. catching the pass by face guarding at times. No need to do that. Just play his hands. And that looked like a cornerback, but he's one of the inside backers oh, for boy. Kansas State. Music to my ears. Lanye Miller brought down. Ball is loose. Kansas State says they have the football. No signal. And they're going to say he was down. Ball stays with Fresno State. Number 30, Chris Carney among the defenders for Kansas State. Well, Ron Prince is asking, was he down? And nobody's giving him an answer. It's third and seven. Can't, can't really tell from that angle. Looked like the ground caused the fumble when he bounced down. Yep. Moore, man in motion, goes right side. Wheel, wheel. Grant Stater delayed handoff. Miller, first down, and Moore inside the 20. Tough inside running for Lanye Miller, the sophomore from Fontana. I like the play call. It, it's, it's a design, it's supposed to be a design zone replay, but it's basically designed more or less for the cutback of, by the running back. And you really are looking to see if the defenders are going to over pursue on the play. And, in that particular instance, K-State did a good job of maintaining good backside leverage on the ball. So the chains move. Fresh set it out for the Bulldogs. Got to finish off this half in style. Grant Stater. Pass is complete to Moore once again. 
His seventh catch already well over 100 yards on the game. And they do not want Marlon Moore to be injured. He's Justin down right Roland now. Makes the tackle. Marlon Moore is shaking up on the play. We are seeing a star develop right before our eyes right now. Moore came into this game with 28 catches. Already he has seven catches, and we haven't even played 30 minutes. Just a great job of getting off the jam, getting inside, settling in the zone, and getting all the yards he can. It looked like he fell on top of the ball there. It's like right there. Might have, he might have got the win knocked out of him. Not, not real sure, though. So more being helped up. Sophomore from Sacramento. With his best first half of the season. Woo. Impressive first half. This second quarter, James, has been all Fresno State. Marlon Moore and this offense, they have piled up 161 yards this quarter. In case you wonder about Kansas State, they've gone backwards <laughs> three yards. Negative three yards as a team for the Wildcats. Well, it's going to be half-time half adjustments for both coaching staffs to see how, how they come out in that second half. Ron Where Prince is going to have to go in and do something a lot of fire underneath his team. Is effort a problem right now for Kansas State? Right now, they're not handling any type. They're not making any type of adjustments on the field with what's going on against on their defensive side of the ball. They're, they're just getting man to man. They're just getting beat. Not that time. Anthony Harding has stood up and dropped after Anthony a pickup Harding. of one. Ron five, Prince will get him adjusted at halftime. Trust me. Both teams with their full complement of timeouts. Let's go down to Vince. You know, guys, one thing I've noticed uh, when you talk about what's been the difference for Fresno State up front, they've, as I stand here uh, on field level, even with the football, they've just been more physical up front than the Kansas State defensive linemen. I think that's been the biggest difference in making some room to move and certainly protection to pass for Brandstetter. Yeah, whack team going toe to toe against the BCS conference team and, and winning the war up front. That's the key. Pass sales high and incomplete. Looking and one for of, Anthony Harding out of the backfield. You know, one of the things that happens when you start to get tired as a defense, guys aren't quite sure how to where to get lined up because they're tired. They can't really think or say when they've been on the field most of the first half. So right now you're, you're seeing that with K-State. Guys are not sure where they're supposed to get lined up. There's some late substitutions coming in. So it's, it's really interesting to see right now if K-State's going to be able to maintain their poise and understand that, look, okay, we've been on the field the first half. But let's not give him a touchdown. We'll give him three, but let's not give him a touchdown. And a touchdown would be a real backbreaker for Ron Prince's team. Third down and goal. Grant Stater looking to Moore. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Their fourth touchdown of the half. That was a ball. That was a fine, finely thrown pass to Marlon Moore. Great throw by Brian Stanley. And we said it earlier, Marlon Moore might be developing to a star right before our eyes. That is a great job by Marlon Moore going up and catching the ball and bringing it down and, and maintaining his composure and, I should I say, his balance. They may not they may not want to count this, though. Did he come down and It looked and like his hand Did touched he come out down of bounds. And bounce? It looked like the first thing to touch the ground was his hand yeah. out of bounds. And this is I think that's a good timeout. That's a good timeout right there by Ron Prince. Question I'm, whether or not he was in or not. I'm not 100% sure that the first thing to touch the ground wasn't his hand out of bounds. Well, one thing's for sure, the evidence, the, the video will clearly show this. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right, Eric. This is being looked at as we speak, and folks, this may be reversed. The first thing to touch the ground has to be a part of your body in bounds, no and it looked it. like his hand touched out of bounds before his knee or his feet touched the ground. Yep, here we go. Let's take a look here. See, he never gets his foot down, but right there, that's the first thing that touches. Here's another look. Just couldn't get that left foot down. Wow. There it is. I 
guess they're not going to review it. Now here comes the whistle. So now, if they overturn this run, Prince will get his the play timeout. is being reviewed. So the timeout originally was called just because right. Kansas State's defense right. wasn't ready. It wasn't a Ron Prince saying, I want you to take another look at it. Really? He didn't call timeout and say, I want to challenge that call. He just took the timeout because they weren't reviewing it right then and there. They just were kind of cooling their heels. So as we take another look, let's go to the studio and stand for it. All right, guys, coming up at the half, West Virginia trying to wrap up the Big East. We've got highlights of their date with Connecticut today. And if Kansas isn't already fired up for Missouri, Lou Holtz will get him fired up. He's got a pep talk for the Jayhawks. And the ACC championship game is all set now. Yeah, after a big win over Virginia, Virginia Tech gets the rematch it's wanted against BC coming up. All right, all that coming up at the half. Eric? Stan, thank you so much. Well, a busy day in the world of college football, that's for sure. And I think Pat Hill... He should be chewing his nails right here. I'm not sure this touchdown is going to stay on the board. Well, he never gets the left foot down. I thought initially he had his left foot down, but he never touched it. And you're right. that Actually, the first thing that he touched was his left hand. And it was out of bounds. I guess the question is, is that, is that clear enough? Oh, it's clear enough to me. I don't see his left foot ever touch the ground. Yeah, is that indisputable video evidence? <laughs> <laughs> it, to me, I think that's not well, a catch. Before we went to break, you said that you didn't think that Ron Prince called the timeout to, you, you said they had a substitution problem, which I thought he called a timeout to actually say to the a sideline judge, hey, I don't think that guy scored a touchdown. Because they, they, they whistled and signaled the ball ready for play, and then they called the timeout and said this is going to be an official review. I think the timeout that Ron Prince called it was just basically to, to regroup because something was wrong defensively on the extra point attempt. Hmm. Well, I think it's, cer it's certainly conclusive now. I, it's clearly it's clear that Marlon Moore did not get his left foot down. Remember, that was a third down play, so this will bring up a fourth down, and here's Frank White. Video the evidence confirms the ruling on the field. Touchdown. Go figure. <laughs> they said it confirms too. They didn't say that. Yeah. With what video? Um, man, we need to get a better monitors in here. <laughs> so it was clear that that is a touchdown from Marlon Moore. Give it up to the sophomore. His second touchdown of the game. And Pat Hill and the Bulldogs may have caught a break there. I would say so. <laughs> Stitzer already with a field goal in this half. Gets his fourth extra point. Extra point and it has been 28 unanswered points in the last 17 minutes of change for Fresno State. All right, we're going to see this one more time. And the guys in the booth are going to freeze it for us. And somehow or other, we're going to be able to see here. His left foot maybe it grazed the ground. Wow. That that's that's conclusive, I guess. So the fans here at Fresno State, they love it. Hey, let's not slight Fresno State now. They're, they're doing this to a Big 12 football team and a, and a well coached football team. So I, credit to those guys. They're doing a great job in the first half in particular. They're doing an outstanding job. Matt Hill has always said, I'll play whoever, whenever, wherever. And right now, he's getting a game against a good BCS Conference team in his own backyard and enjoying 31 points in the first half. Stitzer's kickoff. This one stays in the field of play. And it'll be a touchback is Leon Patton. All he can do is just down it in the end zone. Vince, what's going on down on the field? 
You know, guys, after uh, Kansas State scored in the first quarter on those two long touchdown runs, the Fresno State defensive end, Tyler Klutz, came over to the sideline and got into the secondary's uh, huddle over here on the Fresno State sideline and said, come on, guys, we can't give up the long runs. That's two of them. And since then, that Fresno State has given up nothing, and Klutz has been right there in the middle of it playing uh, an outstanding game defensively. So certainly Fresno State rising to the occasion on the defensive side after the little pep talk from Tyler Klutz, the senior. Yeah, Klutz playing his final home game. Very interested in making sure he ends as a winner here at Bulldog Stadium. Pass is complete. Jordy Nelson stays on his feet. And I think we're going to have a face mask at the end of that run. It's going to tack on extra yardage. Yeah, and that, the, other, the other problem with that is it stops the clock. So, you know, you, you want to make sure you don't commit any penalties, but you want to make sure you keep the receivers in bounds as well. Make them use their timeouts. Number 19 on the tackle. 15 yards added at the end of the run. First down. They call it on Marvin Haynes, and it's 15 extra yards for Kansas State. Anytime you're dealing with uh, playing defense under two minutes and the offense has the ball, you want to make sure, especially in an instance when you're ahead. There's different scenarios when you're ahead and when you're behind, but when you're ahead, you want to keep those guys in bounds. You want to get up nice and slow, nice and easy. Most importantly, you don't want to commit any penalties. Freeman with time. Throws low, and it's incomplete. Looking for his tight end, Jaron Mastru. It looks like the K-State wants to go for it all right there. I think they need to just be methodical and take what the defense is going to give them. Because I, I think if they're greedy, Josh Freeman could end up hurting. We don't want to see that happen. Just take what the defense gives you. Don't stay in the pocket too long. Get rid of the ball and allow the receivers to make yards after catch. Second and 10. Bunch formation at the bottom of the screen. Freeman's pass is bobbled and caught. Nelson, his seventh catch of the first half, a pickup of nine. They need to find where 27 is, Jordy Nelson. They need to know where he is at all times and give that corner some help up top. On third and one, pass is caught. Deion Murphy with the grab. The first down will stop the clock with 19 ticks remaining in the first half. Marcus Riley on the stop. And Rod Prince calls timeout. Kansas State still with one timeout remaining. Well, tonight, national title hopes are on the line, and two Heisman candidates will be butting heads in a game on ABC. It's Chase Daniel and the Missouri Tigers against Todd Reesing and the undefeated, how many times do you say that? The undefeated Kansas Jayhawks. The winner moves on to the Big 12 championship game and possibly a chance for the national title. It's Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, as part of Rivalry Week, presented by Remington at 8 Eastern time. Let's take a look at our... Sonic Rivalry Notebook. Missouri currently ranked fourth. Kansas, two in the BCS. Missouri, they haven't won a conference title since 69. Kansas is their best record in school history, and they're meeting on a neutral field. Brandon McAnderson, number 35 for KU, has had a phenomenal run here at the end of the season, and I think they're going to have to establish a run game with him in order to be successful. Now, in the last four games, he's had eight touchdowns, so they need to find a way to get McAnderson in the, in the ball game and get him going early. First down and 10. Freeman wants to throw. Wants a bunch. Nelson catches it on his break, and it's pushed out of bounds to stop the clock. This Nelson can ball. Well, and, and you know what? Freeman has a gun on him also, because that was a, a fine throw. I mean, he put that thing right on the money. I mean, here you got good coverage, maybe a little too high because you got inside help, so you want to stay underneath that. So when he does break out, you can, you're there, but great timing by Freeman as well as Nelson on that play. Nelson, again, he's the only man they look to. 6'3", 220. When you're a corner that's 5'10", 180, it's hard to get inside of that receiver. You got to get in there early. You can't hope to get in there as the ball's being thrown because you won't be able to get in there. You want to line up in there and make sure that if you can beat him to the spot that he's trying to get to. 
Kansas State has forced to call their final timeout. The clock didn't stop immediately after he was tackled. Okay, now they're going to put eight seconds on the clock. Great point. Because he got the first down, the clock should have stopped once the, the tackle was made, but the clock continued to, to wind down, and they're going to add five seconds on to that. And that is indeed correct now. Eight seconds remaining in the half. Jenkins, the cornerback that's up there uh, trying to guard Jordy Nelson, is 5'11", 180. And uh, he's going to need to do a better job of getting himself lined up inside because once the ball's in the air, if, the, if, he's, even, if he's even with Nelson, there's absolutely no way with Nelson's size that he'll be able to get inside of him. It's just like playing basketball. If I beat you to the spot and able, able to box you out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outboard you every time. So it's going to be important that Jenkins lines up correctly or gets some help inside early. All right, James, I'm going to ask your perspective, former defensive player. Right now, with eight seconds remaining, no timeouts for Kansas State and Jordy Nelson, how am I playing defense if I'm in the defensive backfield? If, if he's within five yards of that sideline, get clearly inside and make him throw the outside ball. But if he's, if he's clearly near the sideline, he's coming inside. So you better get hard inside and, and take it away. Right now, he, he's in the slot, so you better be doubling him. No timeouts remaining for K-State. Freeman on the rollout, right side. Oh, he's open. Touchdown! Jordy Nelson, his 11th touchdown receiving of the season, and that drive was all about Freeman and Nelson. Woo. I guess all the hype that we've heard about Jordy Nelson is, is legit. Here, though, the mistake that the defensive, defense makes, they get their hands on Nelson, but on a quarterback scramble as a defender in the end zone, you don't look at the quarterback. You turn and you face up the receiver because the minute you turn and look back at the quarterback, Jordy Nelson or many rec good receivers, they'll, they'll peel away from you and, and they'll catch it every time. So you have to be disciplined and Good not look back at the quarterback. Two seconds remaining in the half. The Bulldogs 30 Nelson, catch five long. catches, 58 yards on that drive alone. Wow. I mean, that is a Blitnikoff finalist. I mean, he is everything that they've uh, said he was. I mean, he's made some tough catches. He's had Jenkins all over him on some catches where he's made, he's done a good job of shooting him away from the ball. He's caught the ball on the sideline. He's shown his ability to keep his feet inbounds. He's blocked. Uh, what more do you want? The pride of the Sunflower State, native of Riley, Kansas. The people's champ. Came to Manhattan, Kansas as a walk-on. Yeah. And also, you, you forgot to mention, now he's the state champion in the 100 meters, the 200 meters, the 400 meters, four by 800. I mean, how did, how did he not be offered a scholarship? <laughs> and when he walked on, he walked on as a defensive back. Right, right. And Ron Prince alluded to the fact that he believes that's what enables him to be able to read coverages so well is that he's, he's a former defensive back and he can, he can read coverages obviously on the move, which is key. Look at this. Already 10 catches, a buck 17. And that touchdown. On the day, Kansas State, they have 13 first downs. Nelson's accounted for six of them. Imagine just a squib here with two seconds remaining. No brainer. Squib it, get out of here. It is a squib. Oh. And Kansas State jumped on. Oh, they're going to say it's all three zeros. That may have been liberal on the timekeeping. I thought that it said 0 1. <laughs> I thought I saw a second there on the clock, but let's see now. I could be wrong, but it seems, sure seemed like there was one second left on that clock. Yeah, they're spotting the ball on the 46-yard line. It's going to be Kansas State football on the 46-yard line. They recovered what ostensibly is an onside kick. Yeah, take a shot. Take a shot. It was Kevin. That's the end of the first half. Uh, they changed their mind. The ball had been spotted on the 46, and Ron Prince is not happy. Well, you know, that's a case of one of the, one of the refs in the huddle didn't yell loud enough. All right, that'll do it for the first 30 minutes of football. Let's go down to Vince Welch, who's with Pat Hill.
Coach, after you gave up the two long touchdown runs, your defense clamped down. What adjustment did you make? Well, I mean, you know, we, we just didn't do a good job against that bunch. Set, but here at the end of the half, we gave up that long drive. We, we still haven't put together a four-quarter football game. We're going to have to come out first series of the second half and reestablish the offense again. And this game's far from being over. But giving up that, that cheap one at the end of the half is not good. Jordy Nelson had five catches on that drive. How do you defend him? <laughs> he, he's a good player, you know. It, you know, we're, we're playing a little bit off him, but you know, he's a good player. He averages 10 a game. He's a pretty good player. Thanks, Coach. Eric. Pat Hill, his team up by 10, but there's still much work to. You're watching ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Remington. Fresno State Bulldogs looking for that signature win over a BCS Conference school. And so far, they're halfway home. They lead by 10 over the Wildcats. And the Wildcats made a serious run there at the end. You saw what happened with Jordy Nelson, why all the, where all the hype is all about. The guy is definitely worth all the hype that he's been getting lately. Alongside James Hasty, my name is Eric Collins. And James, I want to put you right in the spot. You talked about adjustments that Kansas State would have to make. What's Ron Prince thinking right now? Right now, he's thinking we have to go out and we have to shut down the run game. Early on, you saw Leon Patton and James Johnson hit him for 67 yards and a 45-yard run. And they came to the sideline and said, hey, look, we've got to do a better job of allowing our offense to make plays now. So they had a, they did a good job at the end there, getting getting their playmakers involved, getting Freeman involved, and getting, and getting Nelson involved. I like to see them get back to running the football and keeping that Fresno State offense on the sideline. That Fresno State offense finished off that first half with five possessions, all adding up to points. A field goal, and then four straight touchdown right. drives. Right. Fresno State already with six wins. They're bowl eligible. This would really be an exclamation point in their quest, though, for a bowl game with a win today, and still with an opportunity for win number eight next week in a game down in Las Cruces against New Mexico State. On the turn, Devin Wiley loses the football, picks it up and dives out close to the 15-yard line. A flag comes down late. It's going to go against Fresno State. Well, in case you missed anything in the first 30 minutes, here are some highlights for you. First possession of the game. James Johnson, we talked about it, 67-yarder, came through there untouched. Nobody got a hand on him. Then Leon Patton followed up with a 45-yarder. Big plays for K-State early on. But then for Fresno State, Marlon Moore happened. Moore with a, a career first half, eight catches, 122 yards, and two touchdowns. He and Tom Brandstater both on the same wavelength for the first 30 minutes. And I don't know if Tom Brandstater's had a better first half in his career. That was an outstanding job by Tom Brandstater. In total, 52 points scored between these two schools. We saw very limited glimpses of Ryan Matthews, their stud freshman tailback in the first half, but they didn't need him very much as guys like Anthony Harding ran hard and well for the first half of play, a gain of 17. This is what is at stake. We told you about Fresno State looking for that signature win, looking for respect. For Kansas State, it's all about bowl eligibility. A win today is their sixth win, and they're virtually guaranteed of going to a bowl game. Well, K-State really needs to start playing with a sense of urgency now. They came out a little sluggish. They got, came out and struck it early, but then they found a, found a way to kind of lose their stride, so they're going to have to get back into that rhythm and try to see about shutting down Fresno State's offense early. Grant Stater out of the gun on first down. As a man, it's complete. Ajira Tutu with the grab. Justin McKinney on the stop, but not before another pickup of 17 yards. One of the things that these young guys are going to have to learn is they have a place called Indianapolis, Indiana, where they have the NFL Combine. They constantly have receivers coming in there to see what they can run four ones and four twos. And the reason is, if you don't get your hands on these receivers at the line of scrimmage, they'll be able to run those four ones and four twos. 
You need to do a good job of disrupting the routes, jam the receivers at the line of scrimmage so that they don't, aren't able to run these well-timed routes. The freshman, Ryan Matthews, into the game. One of the rare times we've seen him so far today, and he has the football. And Matthews lowers the head and crosses the 45-yard line to pick up a four. Let's go down to the field, and Vince... Talked with Kansas State coach Ron Prince just a few moments ago before the second half got started. He was very happy with the way his team scored points at the end of the first half, but he is extremely concerned that they're not getting pressure on Tom Brandstetter. As you guys have talked about, certainly Brandstetter had an outstanding first half. And Prince says if they're going to slow down that Fresno State passing attack, it's not so much the secondary, but it's the pressure on the quarterback that has to improve. Yeah, thank you, Vince. We, we talked to, to Coach Prince early in the week, and that's the focal point of their defense is getting tackles for losses and getting sacks just disrupting things marlon moore with yet another grab his ninth catch of the game and he gets another first down for the bulldogs we, we talk about playmakers for k-state i mean they have made marlon moore a playmaker right now with fresno state and k-state hasn't quite figured it out yet Brandstetter to go in another direction. Let's see what happens. Ball placed on the 42-yard line. Inside handoff to Harding. Still on his feet. And finally brought down after a pickup of one. Let's go back to the concept defensively, what Ron Prince is trying to do. The big focal point, tackles for losses in the backfield, is that sound defensively. I, I don't think you can expect to make tackles in the backfield on a regular basis. That, if you look at any any de defensive stat, that's tackle for losses are, are like sacks almost. They, they don't come too often. I think what you're looking for is minimizing the number of yards after con you know yards when they run the football, keeping those the underneath three yards. Then you can have some success. And then you also want to minimize the big plays, plays over 20 yards. And of course they've had those today. And if they continue to have those, you're not going to be very successful. Pass is caught. The H-back. Kinter with the grab. Pickup of six. Given the first half, replacing Bear Pasco. You know, three and outs are also very important for a defense because that allows your defense to get to the sideline, get some rest, talk about any type of adjustments that you want to make. But remember, I don't remember very many three and outs on, on Fresno State's part at, at all. At, there have at, been. Or should I say K-State's part. So. That's, that can take a toll on a defense. More, the longer you're on the field, the more toll it takes on you. Kansas State has not forced one three and out all afternoon long against this Fresno State offense. Now that's a huge defensive stack. Third and three. And Harding refusing to go down until he gets it up for the first down. Inside the 30-yard line to pick up a five. Fresno State, they've played two BCS conference schools so far this year, losing a close one down at College Station against Texas A&M and losing against the Oregon Ducks. This would be a big win for their program today. Well, we talked about halftime adjustments, and Pat Hill, on his part, on his behalf, he needs to make it. He doesn't need to make any because right now his offensive line is getting it done. Lanye Miller still on his feet. Tough run, and a late flag comes in. This may be against Kansas State at the end of the run. Well, that's just great balance there by Lanye Miller. He had him for a loss there, and he did a great job of maintaining his balance and getting more yards after the contact. The next thing you have happen with a defense when you're on the field long, players start to get frustrated. And as you saw Reggie Walker there, close to being inbounds, but he clearly was out. It's a frustration penalty. I mean, you, you, you just want to maintain your composure and say, okay, they're moving the ball on us, but we're not going to give them a, a touchdown. We'll give them a field goal, but you, you can't make those type of penalties. So it's half the distance to the goal. The ball spotted all the way down inside the 15-yard line. The beat continues for the Bulldogs. Miller bottled up close to the line of scrimmage. Great job of that D line of K State. Maintaining le good leverage, getting their pads down and using their hands to, to shed the blocks. 
I'm K if I'm K-State, I'm sorry, if I'm K-State right now, I want to know where number five is, Marlon Moore. Moore with two first half touchdowns. Already with nine catches and 134 yards. He's at the top of your screen wearing number five. Brand Stater looking his way, nothing doing. With time, throws back of the end zone. Incomplete Clifton Smith leaking out of the backfield. No chance at all there. Yeah, and, and Marlon Moore was open again. We talked about how to defend receivers once they get in the end zone, and Marlon Moore had slipped out of there. He's up on the top of the screen. Watch how he finds a way to sit right inside. They don't get a jam on him, and he was open there. You've got to go and face up those receivers. You just got to go plaster them, as they often call it, and face them up. Don't look back at the quarterback because once you do, they'll peel away from you. This drive started way back on the nine yard line. This is the 11th play of the drive. Already today, There's Fresno Marlon State. Right there. With two touchdown drives of 85 yards or more. Third and nine, Brand Stater calls his own number and gets close to the first down. I think he might be just a whisker short. Oh, he's definitely short here, but I'm just surprised he was able to get up there because that was almost a nasty injury there. I don't know if I want Brand Stater running the ball very often. Glad to see him get up there. Submarine to take it down. Whether well, they're going to bring in the jumbo package, and it looks like they're going to go for it. Is this a good call, James? I take the points. I take, I take the field goal. Fourth down and one. Lanye Miller. First down! Touchdown! Well, they took the points. They took all <laughs> six of them. Hey, credit Nate Adams with a, with a fullback for Fresno State with a great pancake block out of the corner there to open up the lane for Lanye Miller. Just an outstanding block. Watch Tom. Watch Nate Adams here. Just, just get him. Just run his legs and continue to drive the defender out of the play. And just Lanye Miller just walks in. Great job by the fullback there. You guys are very unappreciated. Yeah, Nate Adams a walk-on. Hasn't carried the ball all season long, but making big plays like that, you earn your scholarship after a while. <laughs> so the Fresno State Bulldogs, they get the ball to start the third quarter, and it's more of the same. Five straight possessions have ended in touchdowns for the Dogs. Today's telecast is available on ESPN2, presented by Pioneer Kuro HDTV. And it is crystal clear that right now, Fresno State is the best football team on this field. By far. And it's surprising because Kansas State, they need to win to become bowl eligible. <laughs> Lose today, your season's over. Basically, pretty much so. I mean, it's surprising that Fresno State has came out and just dominated as they have so far. Stitzer, another kickoff. This one sails deep and through the end zone. K-State will start at the 20. Now let's go to the studio and Stan Barrett. All right, guys, an absolutely crazy game between Tennessee and Kentucky. 38 apiece in the second overtime when Eric Ainge is picked off by Sam Maxwell. So all Kentucky needs is a field goal, but it's blocked. Dan Williams with a block, dead ball at that point, so none of this even matters, but it was very entertaining. You see the face mask at the end, no penalty there. Again, dead ball situation, so it doesn't matter. So now they go to a third overtime. Kentucky gets the ball first. Look at the throw. Andre Woodson to Keenan Burton. And so Kentucky's two-pointer no good, so Tennessee has to try to answer. They must go for two. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Kentucky's been at some barn burners this year. Yeah, we thought LSU and Arkansas was wild last night. Now, how about that? LSU losing in triple overtime against an unranked team. Once again, unranked defeats a top five team for the 12th time this season. And how about Darren McFadden? Pretty good player. Okay. Second. 
I know we still need to see KU in Missouri play. But right now, Darren McFadden is clearly the, the front runner for the Heisman. Snap infraction on the stand on number 54, five yard penalty, remains second out. Let's go to Vince, who's got some special guests here in the stand. Vince? That's right, I'm with uh, Kim Nelson, who's Jordy Nelson's mom, and also Emily Nelson, who's uh, Jordy's wife, and uh, we've read so much and talked so much about Jordy Nelson, what a great career he's had playing possibly his final game. Of all the accolades that he's received, Kim, what's made you most proud of Jordy as a parent? Um, I believe, like, being captain for the last two years. Um, I know that's probably voted on by his teammates and stuff, and to be respected by his coaches and teammates like that is quite an honor. We'll come back after the play. Leon Patton gets up close to the 25-yard line. Take it away, Vince. Now, Kim, I know that uh, Jordy's dad isn't here today. Are they home watching or uh, working hard today? Well, I think they're all at our um, new restaurant. We're opening next week watching the game. Um, Jordy's brother, Mike, he should be there watching too. And But we made our reservations four months ago. We have a lot of Angus cattle, and it's hard to do chores if there's snow on the ground. And I hear there's been snow back home, so they stayed home to take care of that. We'll come back and talk with Emily after this play. Big third down and seven. K-State trying to keep their offense on the field. They need to get to the 30. Freeman. Pass is complete to Deion Murphy, but he can't get there. He's brought down at the 25. Vince? Now, Emily, I've read that he's nicknamed Mr. Perfect. Now, of anyone that knows a husband isn't perfect, it's the wife. So um, how is he imperfect? Um, he's not a very good singer. So <laughs> he'll, he'll sing in the car and at church pretty loud and proud, but he's not that great. So. <laughs> well, that's about the only thing that he has a bit successful at. Uh, thanks to uh, Emily and Kim, and uh, best of luck to Jordy. Thank you. Vince, thank you so much. So we can't sing. We found his Achilles heel. Yeah, and Mom had a chance to give the restaurant a little shout-out and didn't do it. Didn't do God, it. God, we got to find out the name of the restaurant. I'd like to know where it's at. Yeah, next time we're uh, in <laughs> Riley, Kansas, we can stop on by. All right, time out on the field. Jordy Nelson and the K-State Wildcats on the ropes. They need a defensive stop when we come back. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Suzuki Automotive and the all-wheel drive SX4 crossover. And Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. In case you're wondering, Fresno State is the only campus university in the United States to have a winery fully licensed to produce, bottle, and sell wine. Now the question is, how do they keep the students off the, <laughs> off the winery? That's the question. State-of-the-art equipment, learning how to make wine. Isaac Kinter with the grab, gain of four on first down, brought down by Marcus Watts. Yeah, this is called the bread basket of America. They can grow anything in the San Joaquin Valley. Grapes, oranges, you name it. Avocados, lettuce, a lot of dairy around here, too. Really? I'm told that in this tri-county area, there's more milk produced every year than in the entire state of Wisconsin. Wow. Who knew? Second down at six, Fran Stater gets it to Kittner, who drops the football. Let's go back to the studio and Stan Barrett. All right, guys, more madness from Tennessee and Kentucky. It just keeps getting better. It's 44-38, Eric Ames to Austin Rogers who gets in for the touchdown to tie it at 44. Now, they need the two-pointer, must go for two. Arian Foster can't get there to get it, but he does get a 15-yard penalty for throwing the ball, so they go to a fourth overtime. Tennessee just scored a touchdown from the 40. <laughs> wow. What a bizarre game. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. Keep us posted. Third down at six. Brad Stater again completes it. Jason Crawley with the grab this time. A pickup of 13. Well, and you had a linebacker uh, line up on a wide receiver, so you got an obvious mismatch there. And give credit to Brad Stater for finding that mismatch, because that's what the game was all about, finding those mismatches, and he did a great job there. Now, Fresno State, James, they're doing it without two of their better offensive players 
Their freshman tailback, Ryan Matthews, has played sparingly. Yeah. And Bear Pasco, their stud tight end, who leads them in receiving, hasn't played a snap. Yeah, and let's not forget about A.J. Jefferson, who leads the country in kickoff return yards with 35 a 35-yard average. So that's impressive in itself that they're doing it without all these guys on the field right now. Lanye Miller is brought down at the line of scrimmage by Reggie Walker, who's had a busy day. There's the Bear. Bear Pasco, Jr. from Porterville, California. He's got another year of eligibility, but he's not going to be playing today. He's in street clothes. And Ron Prince said he's the best tight end we've faced all year, so I'm sure he was not uh, displeased about not seeing him out there today. He had three touchdowns in a game against Texas A&M earlier this year. That's that's saying something. Both the reception total and the yardage total tops on Fresno State coming into today's game. That's going to change with the day that Marlon Moore's had. Brand Stater pump fake still on his feet. Pass is complete. Jamel Hamler with the catch and he stretches forward and gets the first down. Vince has more on the latest injury to A.J. Jefferson. Well, and James Hasty talked about the outstanding kickoff the return average for Jefferson, but what the team says is even more significant is the fact that he plays on four other special teams units. The, he's the gunner on the punt team, the corner on the punt return, part of the field goal PAT block attempt team on the kickoff team. So when Jefferson's out, it's not just a one player on one unit. I mean, they've got to find five different guys to step in and fill his shoes. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Well, you know, the other aspect that A.J. Jefferson brings is his size. He's 6'1", 215. And you talk about matching up on Jordy Nelson. He would have been an ideal guy to, to line up on. Anthony Harding. Anthony Harding has run so hard all day long. Finally brought down by Rob Jackson, but not before. A positive first down run. Call it a gain of seven. Now, on the, <laughs> on the drive prior to this, they had a 91 yard drive with no play longer than 17 yards, and they're doing it against. And that's demoralizing for a defense to have an offense methodically move the ball down the field like this on you. K State playing for their season. A loss, and they're no longer in the mix for a bowl game. And again, the chains will move. Lanye Miller with another solid run, a pickup of a half dozen. You know, and that, those are just great blocks. You know, just great seal blocks, great kick out blocks. And Lanye didn't have to do much there. He just had to run through the hole and pick up the, the first down without any effort, basically. I mean, it's, and you got a good kick out, good seal right there, good kick out block by Nate Adams. That's all you can ask for as a running back. James, a month ago, Kansas State had five wins. They lost three consecutive games. Right. They're losing right now. Right. Do teams press trying to get bowl eligibility? I don't know if you, you, you talk about press because it's, so, it's, it's preached so much to players. Ball's loose on the ground. And the Bulldogs, Johnny, on the spot. I think Kenny Avon is the man who jumped on top of it, number 73. But back to your question, I think coaches preach so much about one game at a time, one play at a time, that it's really hard to really focus on anything outside of that play that you're lining up for or that game that you have the next game. So I don't, I don't, I don't buy into much when it comes to guys are pressing. Nah, it's, you got to line up and make plays when you get the opportunity. And oftentimes guys will try to do a little bit more than they need to when it comes to trying to make plays. Two long, time-consuming drives to start the third quarter for the Bulldogs. Pass is behind the intended receiver, but it's caught. Anthony Harding slides to make the grab. Pick up of 11. You know, Brandstater could have went to the right or he could have went to the left up the seam. Guys are running wide open. You had, you had a receiver being guarded by a, a, a linebacker. Reggie Walker was trying to cover a, a receiver down the seam, and that's a mismatch all day long. Brandstater had all day long. He could have made it. He could have made the throw either way, left or to the right. Looks like he had his hand underneath the ball there, so that's definitely a catch. Well, we're going to make sure that that was definitely a catch. They're going to take a look at it in the booth. They're going to make sure it's conclusive, but I, I'm pretty sure that looks like a catch to me. All right, there's a timeout on the field. 
3.20 remaining in the third quarter. Ron Prince hoping against hope that this call gets reversed. Pat Hill and Fresno State up by 17. After review, the call on the field is reversed. It is an incomplete pass. The ball is hit the ground. They throw it down to the eight from the 29-yard third down. Well, not only an incomplete pass, but James also a missed opportunity. Yeah, you just watch it. Shea and Jared Tutu right here. He's, he's, a, he's the third guy in the slot. Just watch him go right down the field, and they try to match up Reggie Walker on him. But right now, the game of football is about mismatches, and you've got a receiver being guarded by a linebacker. That, that's clearly a touchdown. And Shea and Jared Tutu is one of the faster guys on the team. He's right up there with Marlon Moore. Lay that thing, put some air underneath it, and that's a touchdown. So after the reversal it's going to bring up a third down and nine and pat hill is about 10 feet onto the field wants to talk things over with referee frank white not sure what this could be about Please put 324 on the clock 324 on the clock Where here's the throw there to Ryan and Matthews, and, we, and I said before the break, well, it looks like a catch to me, and because you know you can't turn that over, but sure enough, they turn it over. So, go figure. Even though he's had his hands around it, it looked like the ball may have touched yep. the green grass. Yep. Grant Stater fakes the handoff. Finally. Oh. I saw oh, it's going to be a flag called against Cheatham. Did you hear my reaction there? The, the DB in me just came out. <laughs> <laughs> because the ball wasn't even close to being catchable. It hit the ground well before contact. <laughs> That's going to extend the drive for Fresno State. Oh, that's a great play. It's a great play of sticking his right hand in there and knocking the ball away. appearance on the defense, number 23. It's a spot foul. Ball replaced as a spot. Automatic first down. Watch it now. Watch his left hand. He's got a, he's, he has as much right to the ball as a receiver. But was he jumping on his back? Oh, he's going to the ball. He has as much right to the ball as a receiver. Well, that gives K Fresno State another first down. Their 10th first down of this half. Kansas State, they do not have a first down here in the third quarter. Harding, the carry. Harding, inside the 10. Well, that's impressive. To do that to Marcus Watts, who's the second team all Big 12 safety, that's impressive. Because he comes up in the hole and has an opportunity to hit him. And he runs right through his arm tackle. Right through his arm tackle. So Harding getting more playing time than normal because of the injury to Ryan Matthews is now rushed for 66 yards, over seven yards of pop. They stay on the ground with Harding. Oh. And it's another oh. touchdown for the Bulldogs. Nate Adams is not a fullback. He's a lineman. He's a lineman with a fullback number on. Did you see that block? Wow. Nate Adams bringing the wood. Just watch this block. Nate Adams gets his shoulders going downhill and just delivers a shot. Wow. First touchdown of the game for Harding, his third touchdown of the season. He's the fifth different Bulldog to score a touchdown this afternoon. It has now been six consecutive drives that have ended in seven for Fresno State. I'm shocked because this is a Big 12 K-State football team that this is happening to right now. Kansas State came into today's game averaging 29 points allowed. They've already given up 45, and we still have 17 minutes remaining. <laughs> All right, we'll take a breath. Let's go to the studio and stand for rent.
All right, guys, it's finally over. Fourth overtime for Tennessee and Kentucky. The Cats need a touchdown and a two-pointer. Derek Locke gives them the touchdown. They had to go for two because they're still down 52-50. Andre Woodson, though, scrambling, dragged down from behind, so make it 23 straight now for Tennessee over Kentucky. And the Vols clinch the SEC East with the victory. They'll face LSU next Saturday in Atlanta for the SEC title. Wow. What a game. Andre Woodson trying to make it happen, just losing it at home against Tennessee. Outstanding ball game. We keep seeing these games time in and time out. This year's just this been crazy. No, nobody knows what to expect. Now, you're one of those guys that believes that we need to keep on this good times and have a playoff system. Yeah, I just think, you know, we, we can talk about strength of schedules and we can talk about, well, if we would have had an opportunity to, to play in a championship game, we would have beat you guys. And, you know, that issue that we had a couple years ago with LSU and USC, let's eliminate all that and allow the top teams to play in a playoff type format. And we don't have to talk about weakness of schedule. See, my argument is this fantastic regular season has been all the more fantastic because every game has meant something. Drag down before he can get to the 15-yard line is James Johnson. So it's going to be poor field position for Kansas State. Yeah, my argument is all season long we've had fantastic games and they've all meant something because people are, are trying to get to that number one spot or the number two spot in the BCS standings. If everyone knew that the top eight spots would go to a playoff system, then it's not nearly as interesting when you know what you already have in front of you. Yeah, but you still want to be one of those teams that are allowed to be in that playoff spot. So you'll really still battle like you will as if we were playing like right now. You'll still battle those teams because you want to be one of those teams in that playoff situation at the end of the year. But it's a point of being like the eighth or ninth spot in the BCS standings to getting to the playoff system as opposed to battling to get to the number one or two spot and getting to the championship game. Just, it just seems like there's so much more at stake if you're battling for number one or number two right. as opposed to the top eight spots of a playoff. I just want there to be a clear-cut winner. I don't care how they devise it, but I think there needs to be a clear-cut champion. And I don't think we need to worry about co-champion in the AP poll or the coaches poll. I think we need one sound champion and every, that everyone can agree on. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. The big game tonight is the game on ABC. It's Kansas against Missouri. What are your thoughts on that game? As Jordy Nelson walks that tight rope and goes out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Well, my hat's off to Coach Mangino and what he's done with that program in Kansas. It's an outstanding job. I had a chance to cover Missouri a little bit. I think from top to bottom, they're a much more sounder team, but if there's a slight edge that I give, it's because of who they played. And, and speaking of Missouri, who they played thus far this year. You've lived in the in the Kansas City right. metropolitan area right. for a number of years. Did you ever think you'd see a day when end of November we'd have one loss between Missouri and Kansas and then playing on the same field? Well, you know, it's been a Bill Coach Snyder had had turned K State around while four men on the field, ten yard, a five yard penalty. Remains first down. You know, he had that 11-year run there where he had them in bowl games. So he had that, that deal going for a while there in Manhattan. But KU was struggling, and they struggled for quite a while. So it's good to see both programs doing well. Look at the numbers for these two schools. It's crazy, the offenses. Yeah. Both and, averaging well over 40. And the interesting part about all this is that they both have very good defenses. And so, you know, it's it's really it's really tough to decide on who who is the better team. It's, I'm glad they were going to play. Freeman has a man wide open. It's Murphy. There's a flag down on the field. But if this stands, this could get Kansas State back in the game. It's going to go against Kansas State, nullifying a 64-yard touchdown. <laughs> I'm just getting a kick out of watching Pat Hill because he is he's, he's, he's ecstatic. That thing is coming back. Wow. Deion Murphy had his man dead to rights, and it's all going to come back. Yeah, on the left side of your screen here, you see Damon Jenkins allow the receiver to get, you're going to see Damon Jenkins allow the receiver to get outside and cover two, a corner cannot allow the receiver to get outside, and he makes a big play. We're going to show the holding call, actually. Here's, the, here's Murphy's touchdown. We see the end of it, but... Jenkins allowed him to get outside of him and cover two. You can't ask for safety to cover from the middle of the field to the side to the sideline. It's just not fair to him. You got to get him inside. They called that penalty on Alisana Alisana, the big left tackle from Western Samoa. So trying to get some momentum back. The pass is complete to Jeremy Mastro to pick up a 10. 
It'll bring up second down and five. Well, you, you want to say, well, that's demoralizing for the offense. I think it all depends on who's guy in the huddle is calling the plays. If his demeanor is the proper demeanor, then you know what? They'll be fine. They'll be able to bounce back from not being on the score there. Fresno State, they've had the ball more than twice the amount of time that Kansas State has had it. Jordy Nelson gets the first down for the Wildcats. Jordy Nelson with the reception. Well, and we haven't called his name much, but it's going to be imperative that Ron Prince in that offense gets number 27, Jordy Nelson, the ball. Nelson second in the country in catches per game, averaging close to 10 catches for 60 minutes. 107 grabs coming into today's game for over 1,400 yards. And he's been adding to it today. Already 12 catches, yeah. 140, and a touchdown. And he's already broken like 11 records already. Uh, I mean, we could be up here for a while talking about all the things that Jordy Nelson's done. He's second right now behind Michael Crabtree, uh, the receiver for Texas Tech. And he was a freshman, a retro freshman right, right now, by the way. But I tell you what, just the things that Jordy Nelson can do and his involvement on special teams, I mean, it, it just really speaks volumes about the type of player that he is. All right, I gave uh, Nelson the first down a little bit too quickly. They're going to say he's just shy. Third down and one. This is a must for K-State. Oh, it's two down territory time. That's what it is. It's, they got to go for it on fourth down, no matter what. Freeman keeps and gets the first down. Josh Freeman using that 250 pounds to forge forward. Yeah, you see Jordy Nelson, you, you got to get a hand on that type of guy. He's a, he's a big receiver. He does a good job of shooting his body, but he can catch the ball with his hands. He does a great job of finding that open hole. You see him take a quick peek there, but he's just all over the field, knowing where the sideline is, understanding, use his body, use his body to protect the ball from the, the defensive back. He's an impressive guy. He's very impressive. You spent a long time in the NFL guarding elite receivers. Does Jordy Nelson have a chance to be an elite receiver in the NFL? Easily. Easily. Because, again, as I said, when he walks into the National Football League, he's not going to be a one-dimensional guy. He doesn't just come to the, to the game and say, I can only play receiver coach. He can return punts. He can return kickoffs. He can go down on the field as a flyer, a guy that's going to go down and try to tackle the punt returner. He'll go down on kickoffs. He'll do all that stuff for you. And so that just really increases his value. You know, James, one of the things that you have in common with him is you guys were both walk-ons. Yep. Yep. And, I, you know, I, we talked to Ron Prince about the number of walk-ons that he has as well as J.C. guys. And they said the one thing that you have. Oh, my. Ernie Pierce blown up by Damon Jenkins for a loss of three. One of the, one of the, well, back to the point is that we're talking to Ron Prince. He said the one thing that you, you like about a walk-on is that they have a burning desire to prove everybody wrong. And I can recall as a walk-on and, you know, wanting to prove people wrong. So when a team was on the road traveling, I was running stadiums because I always felt like, and even after I made it to the National Football League, that there was a bunch of detractors or people that said I couldn't do it that I wanted to prove wrong. And so I think that fueled the, the whole fire for me. And I think that's what Coach Prince likes about his players. Well, if Jordy Nelson's going to prove them wrong, He's only got another 15 minutes to get it done for his fantastic career at Kansas State will be over. Kansas State, they need to win to become bowl eligible, but they're down by 24 with 15 minutes remaining. It has been all Bulldogs, Fresno State dominating with 15 minutes left. Here on the campus of Fresno State, the Bulldogs trying to end the season of Kansas State with 15 minutes remaining. The Bulldogs on top of the Wildcats by 24. And the Wildcats still the pulse. They have the football. Third down and 12. Freeman. Oh, what a pass. Just a bullet across the 50. That's going to be just shy it appears of the first down. You know, I saw him warming up in the pregame, and I could not believe the strength of his arm. But to be able to roll to his left and throw clearly from the middle of the numbers and the hash mark to the sideline, that's a, that's a very impressive throw. So it's fourth down and one. They're going to go for it. You think this is mandatory? Oh, yeah. 
You said they're down by 24, didn't you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay. Freeman oh. dumps it off incomplete. The tight end Mastro had had it and then dropped it. Well, coaches coach and players play. And on that one, coaches made a good call there. That's a great call. It'll rip your guts out if you're a K-State fan. That was definitely enough for the first down. Oh, my goodness. Yep. So the Bulldogs take over on down. And as a defense, you know they're going to come out and run the football. Fresno State just trying to bleed some clock with a 24-point lead. They give it to Lanye Miller, who gets out across the 45. See, you, you're making Nate Adams' job that much easier when you run up as a, as a corner or a defender. And that, in that case, Cheatham just comes running up and just runs himself out of the play. Now you put yourself in, a, now they're actually taking him out the game, but you want to come up and take on the fullback and force that lane to be, be decreased in size and squeeze the play back into the core of the, of the formation. But when you run right by the guy and don't draw any contact whatsoever, it just opens up the lane. It's just, you don't give yourself a chance as a defense. They stay on the ground. Harding makes the first man miss, gets the first down. Tough running again for Anthony Harding, and the chains will move. Let's go back to the studio and stand for rest. All right, guys, UConn and West Virginia. The Mountaineers apparently tried to make a statement. They came in number three. Of course, LSU lost. And so you got Kansas and Missouri tonight, but it looks like West Virginia wants to make a claim for number one. That's Jock Sanders taking it all the way down to the goal line. 59-14 right now. West Virginia still with 11 and change to go. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Connecticut scored the first touchdown of the game. Yeah, and Pat White's making a statement, isn't he? He said, hey, don't forget me, Heisman voters. They got some ballers here. Steve Slayton, <laughs> oh, yeah. All that's left for West Virginia is the backyard brawl against Pittsburgh. Well, Anthony Harding not much doing Anthony there. Let's go Harding. down to the field. Oh, there's a flag coming in late. Let's sort this one out before we head down to Vince. Harding, number 30, made the defensive play. Personal foul. Face pass, number 72. It's called against Fresno State, so that's a stubbing of the toe, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Vince, what's going on down in the field? You know, guys, as Pat Hill's Bulldogs have this 45-21 lead and certainly have had success during his tenure here, what Pat Hill's most proud of during his stint at Fresno State is the football program's academic success. When he came here, the program's graduation rate was 25%, and restoring that academic integrity was high on Hill's list of priorities as a head coach. And 11 years later, the Bulldogs have produced 94 academic all-conference selections. His dogs coming off the best semester of academic achievement. 49 players oh, achieved a grade Bulldogs. point average of 3.0 or higher. And when you talk to Pat Hill, you don't talk to him very long before he mentions the success in the classroom. And he believes if his program is going to be successful on the field, it's got to be successful academically as well. Thank you, Vince. Yeah, he's... He's one of those guys. He's got his hands all over this program. Yeah. He doesn't let one thing get out of the tentacles, one thing out of his reach. He's making sure he's on top of everything. And he was pretty adamant to us about mentioning their academic success. And I, our hats are off to Coach Pat Hill and his coaching staff for making sure that he's got a, a good ball. Ball start, offense number 62. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Just making sure that his players understand that they're students first. I was at practice yesterday and. I really found it interesting the way that Pat Hill was micromanaging everything. He was giving guys the, the time that bed check was, the time that the bus was going to pick him up, what the meal was going to be for the, the dinner that evening. He knew everything about what was going to happen in his kids' lives over the next couple of hours. And he communicated. With, I, to me, it seemed like something that someone else would, would deal with, but he was dealing with all of that stuff. All right, he calls his team aside. They've made a couple of foolish penalties. He wants to bring things in. We'll take a timeout.
The Kansas State fans that have made the pilgrimage from Manhattan, Kansas, haven't had much to cheer about. They are really losing big time. 45-21, they're down with their season on the line. And James, I guess the question is, are, how surprised should we be the fact that Kansas State needing a win to become bowl eligible just hasn't really performed as well very, as we Very surprised. I mean, here's a team that was ranked 24th in the country at one time in Kansas State. They go out and they beat Texas, who was number seven at the time. So, yeah, I think everybody's surprised right now that Fresno State's doing the type of, putting a whipping on them right now, basically. Yeah, Ron Prince's team, back in October 27th, they had five wins with, with four more regular season games to go. It looked like they were just a slam dunk to become bowl eligible, but that's not been the case. Well, it, it, it's a credit to Coach Hill, Pat Hill, and his, his coaching staff for explaining to those players, look, we're bowl eligible, but we're still going to go out and play this football game. We're going to go out and play it very hard. And that's what they're doing. Hard hitting there right at midfield. It's going to bring up a third down and a bunch for Fresno State. Number 93, Gabriel Cruz. This is not the final regular season game for Fresno State. Pat Hill will take the team down to Las Cruces for a Friday night game next week against New Mexico State. You know, you know it, it would only make sense for, for Fresno State to have come out here and said, look, we got seven wins. You know, we, we, we'll, we'll, get it, we'll get it, no problem. You know, we got another game after this one. In fact, Coach Hill even said, Next week's game is a game that's must win for us. So they could have came out here and laid an egg, but they came out and played, played fantastic football. Third down at 24. And Brand Stater didn't like what he saw and calls timeout. That's the second timeout called for the Bulldogs here in the second half. Now 16 seniors playing their final game ever here at home at Fresno State. With more on that, let's go out events. We've seen some rallying of the seniors here on this Fresno bench, and as James talked about, there wasn't really a lot of urgency if you just look at the numbers from a record perspective for this Fresno State team. But I think that there's a certain urgency for this group of players as seniors. They had 16 seniors playing their final game here on Jim Sweeney Field in Bulldog Stadium, and they want to go out a winner. Even though they've got one more regular season game to go, they want to win that last game on senior day when their parents are here and the fans are in the stands. And James, you can relate to that as a former oh, player and also as, yeah. as a dad of a player. Yeah, who, uh, you know, it, it's a big deal to be a senior and to finish your career with a victory in yeah, front of the home yeah, fans. Yeah, very emotional time, Vince. It is. And, 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 you know, for the players to actually regain their composure and, and come out and play the way they did against a Big 12 football team. Again, I keep saying that because the WAC just does not get the respect that they deserve. And, man, they, they certainly earned it today. Fresno State with two losses in conference this season. One to Boise State, one to Hawaii. That's two pretty good teams. Pass is caught by a Jiratutu, but well short of first down yards. It'll bring up a fourth down and nine. Well, yesterday was a ceremony called Senior Tackle. The 16 seniors on the roster for Fresno State all getting that one final ceremonial tackle and grabbing a microphone, and getting a chance to, to talk to their teammates for the final time and, and say what playing here at Fresno State has meant to them over the last four, sometimes five years. Uh, you know, people say, well, what's the difference between college and pro, pro football? It's those type of traditions that are really what makes college football so special. And, you know, to see those kids out there just having a great time like that, it, it brings back good memories, and I'm sure those guys will never forget. All right, they're going to go for it. Fresno State with a fourth and nine, kind of in no man's land at the 35. They're going to go for it and try and keep this drive alive. Well... Brand Stater passes high and complete. Jason Crawley. Oh, that'll just rip your guts out if you're Kansas State. You know, I can't tell you how many times producers in the booth have said, don't use the word great all the time. But this was just a great throw and a great catch. Because Brand Stater put it up there where only Crawley could go get it. And Crawley goes up with his hands, exposing his body, and makes a great catch. So. I'm sorry, guys, in the booth, if I, <laughs> if I use it one too many times on that play, but it was an awesome job there. So Fresno State still with no punts today. It had been a third and 24. Wow. They get 15 yards on third down. They get nine. Well, they get well more than nine. Yeah. Right? And they pick it up on fourth. There's a gain of 20. Uh, and there goes Nate Adams again. Harding busts down to the 10. You know, we were talking about Harding's numbers in the second half, and they were like 80-something or 90-something. You know what? 
I think most of those are due to in large part to Nate Adams, because Nate Adams is, came out balling in the second half. Yeah, Nate Adams, one of those seniors we're talking about, yeah. who was involved in the senior tackle. Hasn't carried the ball all game, all season. Give him one. But he's made some devastating Would blocks. Would you give him one down here, please? There he is, number 40, senior from Calaveras, California. Once again, he's the lead blocker. They run behind him, and they pick up a couple. Well, credit to K-State's uh, linebackers for figuring out, go wherever Nate Adams goes where the ball's going. Right down by Justin Rowan, number 51. I mean, just watch. There's, there's, three, <laughs> there's three gray helmets in the vicinity where Nate Adams is. Got to take it to the ball every time, Eric. Walk on who just had a dream of playing big time college football. And Pat Hill granted him that wish. Actually, he probably earned it. I wouldn't say he was granted uh, it. He earned yeah. it. <laughs> Hard to miss Nate Adams. Four carries in his career, none of them in this his senior season. Inside the five goes Lanye Miller. To the studio we go and Stan Barrett. All right, Eric at Oregon and UCLA and Craig Shepard going in for a touchdown. The Bruins are up 16-0. They can actually get to the Rose Bowl by winning out, plus an Arizona State loss to Arizona. The Ducks without Dennis Dixon have used three quarterbacks so far. Brady Leaf is 4 for 11, 46 yards. Stanford and Notre Dame all knotted up in the fourth. Thank you, Stan. Fresno State knocking on the door. If they score a touchdown here, James, it'll be their seventh consecutive drive that has ended in a touchdown. Oh, my! Ball oh. comes loose, and K-State well, has it. Fumbles the football at Kansas State. Wow! Well, John Hulick comes up with the football. There's a couple rules as a running back that you always have to remember. One is in traffic, you always want two hands on the football. The other one is, don't jump unless you have to. And that might have been a case where you didn't need to jump. Stay on the ground, get on the hip of number 69, and ride him into the end zone. Andrew Jackson's right there. Get on his hip and ride in there. It was Marcus Perry who forced the fumble, and John Hulick who got the football while lying on his back. There's Hulick with the fumble recovery. That's well, the I second time. Before. It's the second time today that Lanye Miller has fumbled inside the five-yard line. That's really been the only hiccup offensively for the Bulldogs. Deion Murphy with that grab. Well, before the half, we saw Jordy Nelson That's and Josh Freeman hook up. Deion They're going to need to hook up again. Oh, there's a fumble. Marvin Haynes defending. If you're a running back looking to play big-time college football and you want to play a long time, Stay on the ground. Freeman. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. This kid's a player. Okay. Wow. Jordy Nelson now with 13 Jordan grabs. Nelson none more spectacular 20. than that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so effortless. I mean, that was so effortless. But the throw is great now. Freeman's going to be a player. But this catch is so wow. effortless. Look at the concentration. And the understanding of where he's at on the field to get his feet inbounds. Second Guys, I'm telling you, you can't coach that. I know Coach Prince wants to take credit, for that, but you can't coach that. Freeman, pass is complete to Murphy. There's a flag down on the field. The reception made by Deion Murphy, number 87, Damon Jenkins, defending. It's going to go against Kansas State. Let's go down to the field, and Vince. You know, as you saw Jordy Nelson make that one-hand catch, it reminded me of a story how he said when oh, coach bill snyder when coach bill snyder originally called jordy nelson into his office to explain that he wanted to switch him from defensive back to wide receiver nelson thought he was actually going to tell him that you know he's going to have to leave the team because he wasn't good enough and then look at the switch he's made to the offensive side of the football in the career that jordy nelson has had that's kind of that aw shucks attitude and the humbleness that helps make him as great as he is 6'3", 217 pounds. He's got elite speed. He was a state champion yeah, in the 100 and 200. Yeah. Deion Murphy. 10'6 in the 100 meters. So he, 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 he can get him up and get him down. Okay, he, he knows what he's doing out there. 
And the, the key part about it all is, is he's not exerting a lot of energy to do the things that he's doing. That's what enables him to play so consistent throughout the entire game. You get some guys that have these high motors and come to the second half, they're out of gas. This guy is so consistent with his energy that he, exer that he exerts out on the field. It's impressive. First down at 10. Freeman. Pass incomplete. Looking for the tight end, Mastry. Now, that might have been pass interference. That might have been pass interference. He's draped all over the guy. Now, you know, I'm a former defensive back, Eric, so I'm going to tend to favor with the defensive guys. But right here, I think you got to give, you gotta give the receiver a chance to, to catch the ball. And yeah, Moses Harris may have gotten away with one. Or come underneath and try to intercept it, but you can't... Uh, Hang on him like that. Coming out of his break, the pass a little bit too far to the reach. Ernie Pierce, the intended receiver. You know, amidst all this, the, the score of the game and, and what's gone on today, I, I'd be remiss if we didn't just talk about Josh Freeman a little bit. I mean, he's here's a guy that's a true sophomore that has a cannon, and he has made some phenomenal throws today. K-State fans have a lot to look forward to in the, in the coming years with Josh Freeman under the center. We'll have to do it the next couple of years without Jordy Nelson, though. That's a big security blanket he's got. Third down and 10. Pass is knocked away. That's going to bring up fourth down. Yep. Kansas State will have to go for it. Well, you know, you mentioned it without Jordy Nelson. I think Deion Murphy, a guy out of the Houston area, number 87 for K-State, his dad actually coached Dante Hall and Keenan McCardle and Aaron Glenn. Uh, all these guys are in the pros, longtime pros. So Deion Murphy understands how to play the game of football. Uh, I certainly think he'll be a, a go-to guy next year for K-State. They're going to punt the football here. Down 24 with their season on the line. 647 remaining. They're punting the football. Clint Smith, no return. That's a little bit of a head scratcher right there. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh huh. Huh? That's all I can say. Uh interesting. 54 yard punt, four yard return. Ron Prince's team, they're gonna have to get a couple stops on defense. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number six, Jim Thorpe. Considered one of the greatest athletes in any sport, Thorpe was twice named All-American in football after leading Carlisle to upset wins over Harvard in 1911 and Army in 1912. IBM, getting it done. That was our 25 greatest players presented by IBM, getting it done. We saw Tony Dorsett yeah. in the first half, Jim Thorpe in the second. No dispute from me. I mean, those are some pretty outstanding choices. Olympic hero as well was Jim yeah, Forbes. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go back to, to what we just saw a moment ago. <laughs> Ron Prince a week ago in their game against and Missouri, there are a lot of people who follow the Wildcat program right. who weren't too thrilled when they played Missouri, a very good offensive right. team, that twice in the first half they went for short field goals, an 18-yarder and a 22-yard field goal right. instead of touchdowns. Just a moment ago on fourth down and nine, down by 24 with your three timeouts, they punt the football away. You know, I, I watched the game, the, the fourth and one and fourth and five call last week and I, against Missouri, and I thought, okay, well, he's trying to keep his team close. He wants to take him in at halftime. It was uh, uh, fourth and one, and they kicked the field goal, and it took him in at 21-18 at half, and I thought, okay, he's looking to, from a psychological standpoint to have his team feeling pretty good so when they come back out, they're ready to go. But this this decision here, I'm, I'm – I'm, I'm not just I'm not so sure he shouldn't have just went for it because uh, the message that it sends is that basically I'm not certain my defense can come out and be stout enough to stop these guys and maybe just give them a field goal. But go for it. You don't have much to lose, I guess. You got guys like Jordy Nelson who quite possibly playing their final ever college game. You need to win to become bowl eligible. I'm not saying it's realistic to score 24 points in the final six minutes, but you still have a pulse. Yeah. You kick it away, that pulse is, is gone. It's over. It stops. Well, one, you, you got a you got a pretty smart group of kids nowadays when it comes to the game of football. The sports in general, kids are very knowledgeable because they they yeah, really start following it early on and they and they know when certain things aren't right and they're going to be questioning that. They're going to be saying, well, you know, what were we doing? And and I just think it sends the wrong message. That's all. Well, this is what it comes down to. Kansas State 
October 27th, they had five wins. They've since lost three consecutive games. They right. lost to Iowa State. Oh, was, Iowa Not State. only did they lose to Iowa State, they lost at Nebraska, giving up 73 points. They lost last week against Missouri. No shame in that. But then they come out here to Fresno, and it looks like they're going to lose against a non-BCS team. And that's right. that's a tough way to finish your season. It, it, it is tough. It is tough. But uh, Devin Wiley on the return. No, this is Deion Murphy. There's oh. a flag down on the field. Murphy pushed out inside the 10. Well, there was a there is there was an illegal block in the back. The, the ref just took a little a little longer than he should have to throw the flag. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be at the top of the screen, and it's you, you can clearly see it. On return, receiving team number 83, block in the back, spot foul, 10 yards, first down. Right here, right there. Notice how the player falls. If the player falls on his chest, it's clearly a block from behind. But if the player falls on his side, then it's not. And in that instance there, the guy clearly fell on his chest, so that was blocking the back. Good call. So Deion Murphy is the most unlucky guy in all of Fresno. He had a 64-yard touchdown <laughs> catch in the third quarter, called back because of a penalty, and now a 61-yard return <laughs> called back yeah. because of a penalty. Yeah. Bullet caught by the tight end, Mastrew. And if there's been one area of concern for K-State, it's been penalties. They've been plagued by penalties that have negated touchdowns and given up huge first down conversions and they cannot continue to do that they're going to be a, you know they're going to compete now, i don't want to beat a dead horse and ron prince is a fantastic coach went to a bowl game last year but they're still huddling up are you surprised at the huddle i'm, I'm surprised at the huddle I, I must admit now there's a penalty up top on there uh, on the receiver there. at the 25 yard line pass intended for Ernie Pierce. I mean, you don't miss a beat, Eric. Well, I, <laughs> there was 4:14 on the clock after that last catch, and they lost close to 20 seconds. Holding on the defense, number four, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Called against Damian Owens, the sophomore from San Leandro. Well, later tonight, national title hopes are on the line as two Heisman candidates clash on ABC. Chase Daniel and the Missouri Tigers taking on Todd Reesing and the undefeated Kansas Jayhawks. The winner moves on to the Big 12 championship game and possibly a chance in the national title game. That's all coming your way 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. Don't miss it. Jordy Nelson with the catch. Marcus Henry, number 86 for KU. Outstanding wide receiver. Look for Todd Reesing to find him. Clock is running. K-State huddling. <laughs> oh, you had Jordy open down the seam again. If I'm Freeman, I'm looking for 27 and 27 only. He was wide open that time. Watch him down the seam. Here he is right here. He's going to get down the seam, and, and he's wide open. Nobody gets a hand on him. You got to know where number 27 is at all times as a defender. And fortunately, Josh Freeman, the quarterback, didn't know where he was. Third down and eight. Freeman has it knocked out of his hands. Good defensive play by Damon Jenkins. Tough to run a screen when you're running man-to-man, -man. And, and Fresno State was in man-to-man -man on that one. And Jenkins right there just actually, or should I say Owens, just, I'm sorry, Jenkins got it right behind, right behind Jordy and just, they call it jet streaming, just got right behind him and followed him into the play and did a good job of knocking the ball away. So it's tough to execute a screen when you've got man-to-man -man coverage. Fourth down. Obviously, they're going to go for it this time. Freeman flushed, complete. Catch is made by Pushki, Michael Pushki, the senior from Lawton, Oklahoma. 
Good job by Freeman keeping his eyes down the field and extending the play. Good job by his protection, allow him to step up in the pocket and find that find that receiver downfield. Here you see Freeman stepping back and good job by his offensive line, giving him an opportunity to step up in the in the window, find the tight end, make a good job by Pushkin getting down the sideline and get out of bounds. The guy reminds me a lot, a lot of Donovan McNabb. That's heavy praise. And he's young. Just a sophomore. Pass a little bit behind Ernie Pierce and incomplete. Just want to snap that head around as fast as you can, Ernie. All right, how about this for something? Kansas State has never defeated a team that's currently in the whack away from Manhattan, Kansas. They have played against Utah State in 1992 and lost that game. They played at San Jose State in 1963. I'm not going to blame Ron Prince <laughs> for that one, but they lost that one. So if they lose today, they're going to be 0 3 against whack teams on the road. Wow. Oh, my, big stick staying on his feet is Murphy, and he's pushed out of bounds. Damian Owens. Now bring your arms. You know, guys tackle up high. You got to bring your arms. The best place to tackle a guy is in his legs and get him down so he stays in bounds. Keep the clock running. Don't hit him up high and allow him to get out of bounds. So it stops the clock with three minutes even remaining. Back in the end zone, touchdown. Ernie Pierce, his third touchdown in the last two weeks. Well, you got to give credit to Jordy Nelson on that one. They were so focused on Jordy Nelson, the safety vacated the middle and left the middle wide open for an easy throw to Ernie. It just it, You, you got to look at a guy like Jordy Nelson as someone that can be a game changer when he can do that to your defense because your focus is so much on him. All right, they're going to go for two here, James. And if they get this two-point conversion, it's just a two-possession game. A little bit dubious, but they would only be down by 16. So then we can go back and start talking about the amount of time that's elapsed when they didn't go for it on fourth down. Freeman. There's a flag down in the end zone. Well, this one's gonna be tough to call here. It's definitely calling holding, looks like. Here's the problem. Again, on a quarterback scramble. Holding on the defense, number 22. After this is the goal, repeat the point after. You don't want to hold the guys. What you want to do is basically turn your back to the quarterback. And it sounds strange, Eric. I know you give me that look. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you want to turn your back to the quarterback and just face up the receiver. Don't look at the quarterback because the minute you do, the receiver's going to take off and go the other direction. All right, so it's half the distance to the goal. Freeman calls his own number and gets in. Hey, he hesitated for a minute. I was wondering if he was going to get in there. So that makes it a 16-point lead for Fresno State. Kansas State still with the slimmest of chances of keeping their season alive. 2.55 remaining, down by two scores. We'll be back with the final 2.55 in a moment. Kansas State still with the faintest of pulses. They're within two scores, down right. by 16 now. There are a couple CPR pumps away, but listen, <laughs> here, here's Jordy Nelson. We talked about it earlier, and here's the safety on him. Watch what happens when Jordy comes off the line of scrimmage, how much attention he attracts from that safety. Now, that safety's responsibility is to fold back inside, fold back in there to help on the post route by the corner. And when he doesn't, when he's so focused on Jordy, he actually vacates his zone area that, that he was responsible for. So that's the kind of impact that a guy like Jordy Nelson can have. There's on, that onside. Onside kick, and it's recovered by Fresno State. No problem there. Marlon Moore, who's caught everything so far today, was yeah. yet another catch. Well, now, ideally, what you want to do with the onside kick is you want to try to drill that ball down into the turf so you get a high bounce and then you know, allow your team to be able to run up down and, and jump up and, and, and contest for the ball. But unfortunately, when you squib it like that, it doesn't get much bounce. It's pretty easy to recover. 
All right, Fresno State, they'll just try and run out the clock, but Kansas State, they still have the full complement of three timeouts left. And you have made it very clear about the mathematical chances that they have <laughs> available. <laughs> <laughs> Harding with the carry. Pick up of four. Well, there he is. Pat Hill looking for his 11th win against the BCS team. No other coach has more than that. And he was very clear about what other schools are doing when it comes to playing weaker opponents. He said it makes him sick. I thought that was pretty. I was like, wow, okay, coach. Yeah, those were his exact words. Yeah, he thinks that you ought to come out and line up and play good ball clubs. Anthony Harding with another carry. And he was pretty stern about Anthony that Harding. statement. Nearly 35. So Kansas State choosing not to use their timeouts. They're just going to let Fresno State run the clock out They're and not. pick up their seventh win. They're not using the timeouts? Fresno State, they have battled big boys, taking on Texas A&M and losing on the road, but in three overtimes. Wow. Losing against Oregon, and today taking on the Big 12's Kansas State Wildcats, and they're going to win. You know, before we came down here, I talked to a lot of people about Pat Hill, and everyone said Pat Hill is a fine football coach. And I, I am a strong believer in that. He, he did a fantastic job of getting this team ready. As I said, they had nothing to play for. They, they could have played next week and got their seventh win and said, okay, fine, we'll take our ball bid. The they came out and played a heck of a ball game. Vince, what's going on? You know, Pat Hill and his success, I think Pat Coach is kind of with that chip on his shoulder the way he wants his players to play out on the football field. You know, the guys from the Valley that maybe some other schools might not think are, are good enough for their program. He loves those kind of kids. He wants those kind of players to come here and, and strive and be successful at Fresno State. That's kind of the way he coaches it, too. So when he, he talks about those other schools not scheduling the big dogs, I think that's why Pat Hill does it just to show that you can do it and be successful and maybe james that proves that he really is as good a coach as people say i, I support that 100 percent they're just a little bit shy on fourth down you'd imagine they're going to try and plunge forward and just finish out this game all right james i want to ask you a question as a former player would you like to play for love pat it, hill love it. and play a lot of big name schools and bcs schools and maybe only get seven eight wins mm -hmm. or maybe play teams that aren't quite as good as BCS caliber teams and maybe get eight, nine wins. I, I as a player, I want to be in a bowl game. I want to have the national audience take a look at me and my team and see what we can do. So and you want to pad your stats against so lesser I, teams? I, yes, if I have to, if I have to, whatever I have to do to get myself into national bowl contention so that the national audience can see what we can do as a team. Yeah, sure, why not? Because that's what it's evolved to now. They go for it on fourth down. And I think it's going to be enough for a first Anthony down. Harding. Anthony Harding with another carry. And Pat Hill, he's pretty sure that that's a first down. Yeah. You know, we, I know we were talking a little bit earlier about Darren McFadden and what he did last night to LSU. But let's just say hypothetically they didn't play an LSU type of team. And Darren McFadden did what he did. And the country didn't get the chance to see it. Nobody would know about Darren McFadden. At least we wouldn't be as convinced as we are now about the Heisman Trophy that he should win. I think that's kind of what we're talking about when it's, we're, we're talking about the strength of schedule versus the, the playoff scenario. You know, we we, we all want to be on the national spotlight, and I think Darren McFadden took advantage of that last night. And they're just going to kneel down, and it'll be Katie by the door time here in Fresno. The great career of Jordy Nelson coming to a close. There will be no bowl game here in 2007 for Kansas State. Well, and they just doused Pat Hill and deserted it, so he's a uh, fine job. Got a fine job. <laughs> Still got some quickness in him, though. Look at that. Still got some quickness. <laughs> so Pat Hill and Fresno State, they improved to 7-4. and four. They still have one more regular season game next week on Friday in Las Cruces against New Mexico State. Jordy Nelson was sensational all afternoon long. He finishes the day with 14 catches and 151 yards, but it is in a losing effort. As Kansas State, they finish one game shy of bowl eligibility 
They finish their season at five and seven. That'll do it. From Fresno, California, for Vince Welch, James Hasty. my name is Eric Collins saying so long. Now let's send you the ESPN College Football Scoreboard presented by Acura.